This is Bruce Buffer, and this is the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time for the MMA Halls! Welcome, welcome, friends, to the MMA Holes live stream. It's good to be live. It's good to be wonderful, wonderful. How's everyone doing? My name is Mystic Moss, Chris, King of the Dragons. I'm here. I'm live talking to the best community in the world. Everyone hit that like button, share the stream. We have an epic show prepared for you tonight. So let's get down and dirty. As we have UFC Fight Week, we have the BMF belt returning, and we have PFL with Francis Ngannou. That's right. He has a new home the king of heavyweight over at PFL. So we'll talk about that later on in the stream. But tonight we have a special guest. Tonight I bring you a man who is a light heavyweight coming off three fights, wins in a row, 12-3-0. He's a light heavyweight phenom in the UFC making his MMA holes debut. Debut on the show. The African Savage, Kennedy in Chechukwu live. Let's go, champs. <laughs> Kennedy, welcome to the show. How are you doing tonight? Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. And uh, thank you for coming by. It is morning time over there. You're live from Germany. So thank you for getting up bright and early for us. I really appreciate that. <laughs> no problem, man. No problem. <laughs> okay, so first off, uh, let me get this correct. It's Inzechukwu. Am I saying this correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. You pronounced it right. Very nice. I, I, I've been fumbling names so much, but your name is a very cool one to say here. Inzechukwu. What is the weirdest way people pronounce your name? Um, I actually mispronounced it several times. Some people say Chuchukwi, people say Sujuku, but um, I constantly try to correct them. But um, you actually did a, did a good job. Okay, there we go. All right, I got something right over here. That's good. Wonderful, and that's wonderful, wonderful. wonderful. Kennedy, it's great to have you on the show. Uh, first off, let me just say this. I got to get this out of the way. Uh, your last fight, you fought a gentleman named Devin Clark. And Devin Clark is a guy that's a really good friend of ours. And you choked him out in the second round, Kennedy. And I almost cried and <laughs> sobbed. But I said to myself, we can get past this. And uh, when I spoke to Jason Ferguson, he's like, would you like to have Kennedy on the show? I said, of course, but it's bittersweet that you choked out our friend. How did it feel to take his soul? <laughs> it was just business. <laughs> Nothing personal. <laughs> there you go. I, you know, it's funny. I texted him today and I said, hey, I'm sorry, <coughs> Devin. I said, we're having Kennedy on the show. We're going to make a new friend. And he says, you're a very nice cunt. That's what he called you. <laughs> How do you feel <laughs> about that? <laughs> it's a weird compliment, right? I, I, I didn't hear you. What did he say? I, heard, I didn't hear the last part. Okay, he said you're a very nice cunt. That's exactly <laughs> what Devin said. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a good guy. He's a very good guy. You know, we talked after, after the fight, and um, he's a he's a, he's a a good fighter, a good father, I believe so. And um, nothing personal again. <laughs> it's just, it just, it just business. It is just business. And I got to say, That's it's got to feel good being Kennedy right now on this win streak in a very dangerous division. You're taking, you're taking people out left and right. How does it feel at this stage of the game, being this UFC light heavyweight at, uh, you know, just on top of the world? 
Yeah, you know, I learned as I go. You know, when I first got to the FC, I, I feel like I got I got there too fast. And um, I had several holes in my game, but um, after every fight, I, I feel like I'm uh, leveling up and upgrading my skills level, and um, I'm learning on the job. Mm-hmm. So um, everything's going well so far, and um, as I continue to go on my journey, I continue to make those slight adjustments. Isn't it crazy how the Contender Series, your your debut in front of Dana White was in 2018? You've been with the company yes. for a while now. It, does it Did it go by fast? Yeah, it seems like yesterday, but um, it seems it does seem like yesterday. But I feel like um, all those experience have played a huge role on my victory. You know, I, I, the victory I had last last month. Yeah, I feel yeah. happy. I feel good. I bet you know I'm looking through the resume and and you you lose to Paul Craig in your actual debut and then you go on a three fight win streak with a guy yes. like Carlos Olberg on your mantle. I mean you look at that then two losses in a row and then bang you're on a three fight win streak again. I look at the people yes. in, in on your your hit list over here. You fought some serious killers. I mean they didn't do you any like throw you any quote unquote cans. They threw actual decent fighters over here. What was the toughest yes, experience? you had in your run from 2018 to right now in 2023 um i feel like my biggest challenge was um adjusting to the pressure on on stage you know i've never fought on that big stage and um you know getting to see that from a kid and getting to be there in person is kind of overwhelming but um you know when i'm there is the only adjustment is the mindset being able, able to feel at home there feel comfortable and being uncomfortable so um it's not really the display of skills this Skills always be what is displaying those skills on the big stage. And it's crazy. You had what, two professional fights and then bang you're in the contender series? Is that correct? Yes. That's the first contender series. Okay. Yeah, I was on there twice. Yeah. So, yeah. That, that is two one professional fights. I was on Yeah. How does that happen? Two professional fights and then you get the call to be on the contender series. Like how how does that come about? It was crazy because um, I was trying to get more like amateur fights and professional fights before I make that leap to the big stage but in the regional scene over here in Texas well not here but in Texas um, the people I don't know they didn't want to fight me for some reason you know I wasn't that good but um, no one was going to fight me so my coach was like you know we got to go for the contender series that was the first time the initial contender I went for and um, we went for it I had one amateur fight before I turned pro and um, I turned pro actually on 20... 2017, I believe. So. Yeah, it's 2016. And, um, 2016, uh, November of so, 2016. Yes. Yeah, it's crazy. One amateur yeah. fight, and then bang, right to pro. My goodness. It was crazy. I was so nervous because I, I felt like I didn't have the experience. I didn't accumulate that experience, and nothing beats experience, you know. You have to just be there to absorb it. So, you know, when I turned pro, I was like, oh, my goodness, I'm not ready. <laughs> and, I mean, everything happens for a reason, you know. So I had to go. I had to swim with the Sharks. It's it's no, this I, is I, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go. Okay, it is fascinating. I'm looking at it right now. One amateur fight, bang, you, you fight your professional debut. It's a second round knockout. Then you get a unanimous decision, bang, you're in the contender series. So now, yes, I mean, <laughs> three fights all together, you're in the contender series. So what happens? Your manager calls you up and says, "Hey, Dana wants to see you." Yeah, Coach Safe is my manager, so you know he calls me up. He decides to take that that leap to the big stage, and uh, he thought I was ready. You know, I was doing pretty good in the training room, so I knew I wasn't ready when it comes to experience. So mm-hmm. um, I mean, so we did go for it, and uh, it was a horrifying, <laughs> a horrifying experience. You know, that that big stage and the big lights is just something different until you make that adjustment, until you feel that pressure, and that so-called octagon jitters. You never know how it feels like. So, you know, when I got there, you know, everything soaked in, and I just felt overwhelmed. My punches felt heavy. My legs felt heavy, and um, I mean, I did win. But it was the funniest performance I ever seen. But um, you know, as time went on, I, I gained that experience. And although I'm a slow learner, I'm more of a guy that puts in the work. You know, slowly over time, the hard work pays off. Yeah, it was a split decision win against a guy that was five and one. So a guy had more experience. He had a winning record. Yeah, he had he had several amateur fights too. So it was crazy, and he was a black belt. I think a brown belt, black belt in jiu-jitsu. <laughs> so it was crazy. That that first round, man, he locked in that um dart stroke. Oh man, that was crazy. And my life flashed before my eyes. I was like, hey, <laughs> how did I get in here? But um, you know, hey, to God be the glory. That, that the victory. That must have been something else. Be the guy beat himself. He, yeah, 
he threw so many punches in the first round, he just got exhausted. And um, I just overwhelmed him. I actually didn't throw any hard shot. I threw like one hard shot the whole time. And the guy kind of drowned in his own fatigue. Wow, that's crazy. So when he got you in that Taurus, like what we, what was going through your mind? You're saying like, holy crap, how the hell did I get myself? But yeah. <laughs> we were actually working on escaping that Darsh the week before, the, um, two weeks before I had that fight. And um, when I got in there, I was like, crap, because he took me down. I scrambled. By the time I got back up, he locked it in. And I was like, oh, my God. And then those Darsh shows, especially from a black belt. Yeah. I think from a brown belt. He was a brown belt at that time. Um, I don't know how I got out of it, to be honest, because if a brown belt slams in the Darsh, it's kind of closer. It's very, very hard to get out of it, especially – depending on his experience level. So he slammed it in. I got out of it. I don't know how I did, but, um, you know, got got the victory. Man, that is unbelievable. So let me back up a little bit. I, I did notice um, the UFC had like a little um, uh, kind of origin story about, you know, uh, how you came into the gym and your mom brought you in over there and all that fun stuff. The um, Your backstory <coughs> in Africa. So you, you were raised, born and raised in Africa, correct? Yes. And And when did you move to the States? 20 2009 2009 okay so you you yes. were there for a while and so you said you used to watch the UFC in Africa yeah well we don't usually watch it we should like have, see articles of it in newspapers and stuff like that because we didn't really have access to it but um when we when I got here I really wanted to go for it but my dad wasn't really fond of that you know he didn't like he didn't like um athletes yeah, especially sports he didn't like being involved in sports I mean although he was very athletic but he was more of a, like a, a book person go to school learn and become a doctor or a lawyer my mom was the person that really pushed me to go for my dreams so coming and go, coming along to 2015 you know she that's when that's when she was diagnosed with ALS actually 2014 June 2014 she was diagnosed with ALS <clears throat> and uh, I needed money you know because I, 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 I didn't know what the disease was mm -hmm. you know so I googled it and I saw the effects of it, and the, there was actually no cure for it. So I just needed money to help my mother because um, my dad started to actually and started to like push my mom away and neglect her. So we moved out from his house. You know, I started MMA. My mom was the one driving me to practice, dropping me off, and everything was history from there. So wow, this is crazy. And and guys in the chat. Um, if you haven't seen, we, we put it on, uh, actually, we'll put it on the community center again, the, uh, this video that the UFC put out about the, the backstory with, uh, Kennedy and his mom. I mean, it's, it's quite the tearjerker, uh, how they put that thing together. And I mean, to, to be able to prevail and, and, and there's one line that you said, it's not like, I, I can't, I don't know if I'm getting this right, but you said something like to the effect of. Uh, it's not a chore to take care of her, or it's like I can't remember how you said it. I don't know. Do you remember what you said over? Yeah, there? It, it was. It wasn't a burden for me. You That's know, people it. always ask, like, man, how was it taking care of mom and being able to go to school at the time and um, you know, work full time and train and take care of my brother who was autistic and they thought it was so much, but you know, growing up in Africa and having that culture behind me, it was like we had this obligation to do so. You know, I couldn't abandon my mom, so she gave me everything. You know, she was there through the thick and thin so it's like i had to it's my <clears throat> it's my job to do so i had to do it yeah so i had to take care of her so, so i mean to god be the glory i balanced all that and um came out on top you know i, I gave her all the, i thank my mom man even though she's not here i really really grateful for the man she raised she seemed like such a sweet woman just from that video that i saw i mean it was completely heartbreaking uh and you said your brother is autistic as well yeah my the, my, the first my for the first my first brother the one okay. i first born He's autistic, you know. Oh my god! He's way older than us, and then me. We have three boys and a girl. So wow. So girl, yeah, I tell. Where, where did your so what happened with your <clears throat> father? Your father still in the picture, or? Yeah, I mean he lives on the other side of town in Dallas, and um, okay. I mean we're still I've forgiven him and moved on. Well, um, yeah, it is what it is, you know. What, what am I gonna do? I can't do all of the past. I yeah. actually feel bad for him, you know. He wouldn't get to experience the joy. No, and the success that I've already racked up. But um, I wish he, I always pray for him so he can like, come to Christ and turn it full circle, mm -hmm. you know, because um, he's still dwelling on the past and the trauma from his childhood. And uh, I mean, what can I do? So you essentially been became the man of the family, really, right? I mean, it seemed like you assumed yeah, that role. Basically. Yes, sir. Basically, you know, taking care of my sister, putting her through school, you know, helping my brother, taking him to his own autism center where they teach them different crafts and 
artwork, you know. So I have to, you know, stand strong and be there for my family. You can't abandon them when mm-hmm. things got hard, you know. So sure. to God be the glory, I prevailed over all those circumstances. And I'm there you slowly go. coming up, coming out on top. So, so now talk to me about how you were raised here. You said so you were getting articles about the UFC. So you guys didn't really get to see what was going on in the sports world, what's going on in the U.S. or all over the place. It was just articles. So what did you guys do? Did you guys like fantasize about, hey, I want to become this type of athlete? Like how was it back in the day? Like what were you guys doing over there? I mean <laughs> – we, we, we always fought, you know, we also watched a lot of videos and movies about Jackie Chan and the Jet Li and the Van Damme. And, uh, we walked several miles away to the Market Square where they had like, electricity, so we were able to watch those things. And uh, We didn't really know much about the UFC, like as far as the, the technique goes and skill-wise and jiu-jitsu-wise and everything like that. But um, when I came here to America and had access, you know, to the public library, every time after school I go there and I play videos, of Chuck Liddell, Anderson Silva, Pride Days, Vitor Belfort, and um, I was so intrigued uh, with the sport. I, I was kind of amazed. I, I was surprised that they pay people to fight, you know. And um, the the troublesome kid in me just couldn't look away. I just had to do it, you know. I had to do it. But at that time, at that time, um, my dad wasn't um, <clears throat> obliged to that. So, mm-hmm. you know, over time when I I was younger then, but as I got into college, I was a man of my own. I had to make that decision on my own, and I was like, I did, I'm not going to let it pass by. I'm not going to let my dreams die, because I felt like my dad let his dreams die. And um, not, like, intentionally, but in order for my mom, my mom was a track star back in Nigeria, and um, my dad was, a, I think he was a, a power weightlifter or something like that. And while they didn't have the resources and the sponsorship in order to prevail over there, due to the poverty and the bad leadership, but um making that sacrifice for us. I feel like my dad didn't want me to pursue my dreams because he didn't get to pursue his dreams. My mom knowing my mom who know the excess of not pursuing your dreams and the the regrets, she she just couldn't let that fade away. So she pushed me towards my dream and told me to pursue it with everything I got because I'm gonna regret it on the long run. So I went for it. She she motivated me to keep going and I, I to this day I'll never forget that. That's that's so awesome. So she just pushed you. She said she kicked you in the butt and says, "Hey, get to the gym." So so you how did you find like arrive in Texas? Why did you choose Texas to uh, to go to? No, they were Texas to when we came because they were here before us. So they were in Texas before us. Okay. So we came. We're we're based in Texas. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you had family there already, and you said, "Okay, let's let's go over here." It seems like yes. better. Okay. I mean, so yeah, now that must have been, adjustment. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say a massive culture shock, right? I mean, in Africa, yes. what's going on over there? And then you're in Texas with the Yeehaws and the Cowboys <laughs> running around. What was it like, the transition? It was crazy, especially dealing with the weather, the snow, the <laughs> kind of the culture. You know, there wasn't a lot of respect over here. You know, no one respect the elderly. I'm pretty sure it's people who are respectful, but it was it's totally different from back home. Because back home you could get beat up for disrespecting your elders or your fellow <laughs> fellow person, you know. But on here it was just totally different, you know. People get away with so much and I was like kind of shocked, you know. But um, I stayed on my own and did what I had to do because um I was already molded and carved by the culture back home, so I couldn't uh, waver due to the bad things happening over here. So yeah. I constantly observed and analyzed different things going on here, made adjustments as time went. And then, so when, how quick did you get to the gym and say, okay, let's get this going here? Your mom took you to the gym? Yeah, well, she told me to Google a couple of images gyms nearby the area. And I Googled a couple. I feel like, I think um, there's a couple of uh, gyms that popped up. And at that time, my coach was the head coach of Octagon MMA. Okay. He didn't really have 40s MMA going. So he was the head coach of Octagon MMA, which was the gym at that time. He was, you know, Overseeing, <clears throat> so I googled that up. Went there for the first time and met him and started training. You know, my mom was the one that drove me up there. I didn't really have my license at that time, so she drove me up there. I started training. At that day, they had they had striking going on. So I think they were close to ending striking, and I didn't really have no knowledge about anything. No, no jiu-jitsu background, no wrestling background, no striking background. And after that was jiu-jitsu grappling, you know, I was totally lost. But, um, you know, I joined the pro practice at that time. And um, due to my persistence and my uh, endurance, my coach, I kind of caught his attention. So after practice, he told me to wait. And I waited. 
he spoke to me one on one and I told me that I have the talent and the potential to make it to the FC. But <laughs> that's the whole point. I was there, you know. I told him that I really want to make it to the FC. You you walked in and you said, "Hey, and I, I, I want to go to the big dance." There. He probably lit up though. The coach. Yeah, I, I mean, I didn't tell him because. Go ahead. Yeah, he he saw the he saw the 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 the, the cardio. He saw the the, the persistence and uh, he he talked to me after practice. And told me that I could make it to the FC. But I never told him that I was gonna. That was my whole goal, you know, of why I'm doing the MMA. So, as time went, you know, I kept training three times a day, four times a day, just racking up knowledge, racking up experience, and uh, everything. So now, you go, and what they must have been foaming at the mouth when they saw you walk in, six foot five. I mean, you got all the tools, right? Like, if if someone would say, "Hey, yes. this guy wants to be a fighter," we could mold this guy into something here. So they must have been like. That's probably why they rushed you so quick was because of the your given talents, you know, and your size and everything. Yeah, at that time they had a couple of guys who were six five, six six, six seven. But I think I stood out because of my agility and my um, athletic ability. You know, I stood out so very much, and I, I was absorbing dog so quick at a higher. Even though I was twenty two, about to turn twenty three at that time, mm -hmm. I was just packing up that knowledge. Most people have previous backgrounds, like you know, some people are wrestlers, you know, from a kid. Some people had jujitsu background a long time ago, but I never had anything. Mm -hmm. So I knew time was against me, so I had to rack up that knowledge and learn as fast as I can. So sure, yeah, I, you know, it's funny. I, I was watching uh, Kamara Usman on Anatomy of a Fighter. Shout out to Will Harris over there. And Kamara went back to Africa, and he was and he was looking at the local talent, the the genetics. You guys, I, it is wild. I mean, beasts over there. You know, coming over to the UFC and just doing some crazy stuff. I, if if the UFC were to go to Africa, like or PFL, like Francis Ngannou signing with PFL and having an event in yes. Africa, that would be absolutely massive, right? I mean, how do yes, you think it'll go out? Yes, it will. Like uh, talk about talent. I don't. There's kids back home that are super talented, but they just need the sponsorship. You know, but I'm on January. I went back January twenty. You know, went back home, went to several MMA gyms at the Capitol over there. I saw so much talent. Not, it's not like I was oblivious to that. I knew there's talent. I knew there's potential. But they just do, didn't have anyone backing them up. Yeah. Anyone giving them the chance, you know, because of the corruption back home. But, um, you know, there's several, man, that's enormous amount of talent. It's vast amount of talent back home, potential. You know, they just need that push. They need that person to, people, person to help them keep push them to the next level, you know. There's a kid, um, my cousin, is named Melvin. He, um, he's very, very... Man, athletic, very powerful. It built like a middleweight. And um, it's another of my younger cousins named, named Boyka. Now, that's his nickname. But, um, he's very, very good. He's, he's more of a better weight, uh, flyweight better weight. And uh, I'm willing to help them push them to the next level. And I'm just waiting for for the right opportunity, you know? So I'm waiting. That's what I'm waiting for. And what do you think about what um, Francis Ngannou did? And he left the UFC. He tried to get you know a whole nother situation taken care of, make a little bit more money, make his opponents more money. He wanted to do some stuff in Africa. What do you think about that deal? Yeah, that's good. You know, kudos to him. You know, I was proud of him. He, he got it done. You know, especially when everyone criticized him for leaving. You know, yeah. I'm not there. It's, I don't know what happened between his discussion with Data, but I wish him well. You know, as an African brother, being able to lock down that deal is awesome. You know, it's a huge, a huge. <clears throat> it's a huge plus sure. for him, you know, especially you PFL Africa. And, um, he's going to do tremendous things with that opportunity he got. I, I tell you what, maybe it's a long shot, but I would love to see the UFC uh, go yeah. against PFL in Africa. Why not? I mean, you got <laughs> you got John Jones with you guys. You got Francis over at PFL. It, it, you could have all the, the Nigerian African fighters over in the UFC fighting whoever in PFL. And I think it would be a massive event. Event? Would you think that would be something cool? I mean, that would be cool. Well, I feel like that merge of different of both promotions is <laughs> is far from being happy, happening. So um, I don't know what is going to happen, but it, it's just cool to think of, you know? Yeah. But um, I don't know what is happening, but... Um, as far as UFC Africa, that'd be tremendous, especially hosting fights back home. But it's gonna take a while because I don't know really. I don't really know about the logistics of how that should be made or how that's gonna be able to take place. But um, it'll be definitely cool and tremendous to have the kids back home see the UFC African fighters, you know, perform, you know, on the big stage. 
I got to ask you this question because of the controversy. What do you think about Duplessis running around saying he's he was going to be the first real African champion? What do you think about that and Izzy's response to it? And every <laughs> little little hot water conversation over here. But what do you think about that? Uh, I don't know, man. I, I feel I don't think that was the right thing to do. Even though if you look at history, it's Africa, but I accept him. He's South African, but I just don't know why we Africans are always um, causing a division within each other. You know, you mm-hmm. saw the interview with uh, what's his name, Rodriguez, y- Yair Rodriguez, and uh, uh what's the name of the the, the female flyweight champ right now? Uh, uh, hold on a second, Alexo Grasso. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot Grasso Alexo won. Grasso, you know, right? <laughs> yeah, and um, Brandon Moreno. You know, all three of them had an interview together. And although they trade here, none of them was competing with each other, saying that oh, I breathe Mexican air or whatever like that. You know, they they all came in. You know, and they came together. You know, and just was cherishing each other's um, accomplishments. Well, there's always Africans. We always try to challenge each other, compete with each other. It's just not smart. You know, I feel like we should just sit down and just blend together it's always the competition i don't know why there's no reason why he should have said that you know but um, it is what it is he already said it i don't know whether he meant that or whether he used that to like try to get the title fight but um, yeah it is what it is yeah it's not think... something i would say you know that's it's probably not, i don't feel like he's smart to say that you know? He's just trying to. It looks like he's trying to ruffle feathers, and then he start backpedaling, and then it, it's too late. Yeah, you know, he said it already. Yeah. So now everyone's going back and forth, and yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's a problem. You don't want to divide. Like that's that's crazy. Yeah, and it's so it's silly. not good. You know, there's several ways you could have went about it, but to say someone is less African than you, and I understand. There's several people that that moved out from their countries, from China, or whatever, to move to the states to pursue a better life for their family and people back home, but. Why would you say that? You know, I've never yeah. heard other cultures. I've never heard any athlete from any other culture say that to their fellow athlete. But um, it's always African. Would you? Would you, you say? To, what about Mike like, Perry? Do you find? Do you take Mike Perry in as one of the African fighters because Mike Perry runs around? <laughs> <laughs> he's a very funny guy, Mike Perry. I think he said he was two percent African. <laughs> so it's funny. You know, Mike Perry's a funny guy. You know? He's out of his Love mind. Guy, but, yeah. yeah, I know it's funny. It's hilarious. What What are your thoughts on like? So they're bringing back the BMF belts. I, I noticed with uh, Poirier versus yes. Gaethje too. Yeah, Gaethje. Yeah. Do you like <coughs> Do you like that BMF belt, or you think it's a little bit of a circus? I know. I think it's a way of you know catching the audience attention. But um, but it is you know. Um, I feel like the the, the weight classes and the, the belts for the championship you know title is um better. That's enough. I don't know why they're adding the BMF, but I mean, it's not my show. It's their show, you know. He can do whatever he wants. So I'm just here to fight, you know. I'm here to fight whoever they put in front of me. There you go. I'm going to ask you one more controversial question. Power slap. Are you a fan or no? No, I'm not a fan. <laughs> not a fan. Yeah, it's just, man, it's so much brain damage that people are suffering. If it was something where, like, you tie one hand down, and one of their hands down to the table and force them to, like, dodge a slap and throw a slap and that's got to be better because they get to dodge you know but this one you're just you're just expecting brain damage you're just staying there you know people are getting knocked out left and right and i don't know like that you know there's no way to mitigate the damage or move around or dodge or defend you just have to stay there and eat it you know, it's not it's not something i'll be trying to do even if i was even if i didn't have the money it's definitely something i'm not going to do yeah, I don't blame you. I know most every UFC fighter we've asked, they're like, "Yeah, that's that's a little too silly," um, and it's almost it's kind of like a slap in the face to the actual UFC fighters. Uh, the way Dana's like pushing <laughs> this out there, it's like you guys are really fighting, and and these guys are just slapping each. It's silly. I know. I mean, they can do whatever they want, but I feel like it's not it's not healthy, especially for the brain. <laughs> just being there, sustaining damage, expecting it to come. You know, it's not like you can dodge it. You're just coming. You have to take that. That that hit, so that's something I, that's I'm intrigued about. I just want to keep fighting. At least fighting, you could dodge, you could move. You have several tools to utilize, but the slap thing is just it's behind me. Yeah, it's crazy. So it's it's nuts. You've grown in the UFC. It's like it's basically you've learned a lot of your skills in the UFC because of your limited experience beforehand. And here we are on a three fight win streak. You get on the mic. And you're just a company man. You didn't talk any trash. You didn't do any call outs. You're just like, hey, whoever put the boss puts in front of me, I'm gonna knock down. Yeah. And and what's yeah, I the- just 
I'm sorry, finish up. No, I was going to say, what's the mindset behind that in a world where everyone's always talking smack and, and you know, saying yeah. silly stuff? I didn't grow up like that. My mom didn't raise me like that. <clears throat> I don't talk trash, you know. I mean, as a kid, I did, but, you know, you get beat up for doing stuff like that. You got to just respect everybody. I understand the trash talking, the call outs helps, you know, as far as promotion, promotion wise. But um, it's not something I'm, 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 I'm it's not something I'm going to do. Just put it like that. I just want to let my skills pay the bills. Let my skills draw people in. But as I'm slowly, I know I'm far away from being a great fighter, but I'm slowly racking up that knowledge and that experience. And by a due time, I'm going to be promotion by God's grace. There you go. And so you have a fiance, correct? Or are you married right now? Yes, I have a fiance. She's in Germany. That's why I came to Germany to be my future mother, father in laws, you know, and, you know talk about different other things and all dynamics when it comes to you know marriage and union together so i'm here you know having a good time very peaceful quiet over here and i'm getting business done i'm, I'm spending a week here before i go back home because i have to get back to the training room and start training put my head down and start grinding sure so when did you meet your fiance i'm always fascinated by you know fighters and their family life when did you meet your fiance uh, when I traveled over here, when I traveled to Germany, though, I just traveled here to like for church, st church stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, I ran into her. We, we would go exchange numbers because her mother, and father are ministers and pastors in the church. We exchanged numbers and we talked from there, and everything <laughs> went from there. Okay, I'm going to ask you another hard hitting question then. Since you guys are very religious, right. do you wait to have sex or yes. did you smash right off the bat? <laughs> you can't, man. Hey, you can't, you can't do that. Okay, so you even waited. Even though if you make mistakes in the, even though if you make mistakes in the past, you just can't do that. I'm very religious, and I'm, you just have to wait. Wait till God blesses you, man. People don't understand it because we live in a sinful world, and people don't understand the the, the, the wrath of God that's going to rain upon them. So many evil things are happening right now, as you as you know, you know. Mm -hmm. So many sinful natures are being condoned, but I just can't. I can't accept that. No matter what sin it is, if the Bible's against that, that means be God's against that. So I have to go with what God says. Wow. So at the same time, I'm not saying I'm righteous. I'm not a righteous person, but I know when I fall short, God's grace will be sufficient for me. But so you just have to be able to pay attention to God because at the end of the day, we all die. Mm. And whether you believe in God or whether you don't, you're going to stand and you're going to be judged by God. And um, no excuse will save you that day. And whether you whether you chose to believe in God or not, no excuse is saving you that day. So I'm just trying to put my head down, pay attention to God's navigation in my life, His divine navigation, and um, let Him lead me. You know, I'm not trying to lead myself. If you're gonna say let God, let Jesus take the will, let Him really take the will. Don't try to let Him take the will 50 percent of the time, and you want to drive 50 percent of the time. Trust His judgments, and He will lead you. I'm, wow. He never have led me astray. So I've always paid attention to him, especially when I gave my life to Christ at 23. I focused on him, and, oh, solely on him. So at 23 years old, that's when you made a big shift and you found God, correct? Yes. That's, okay. Yes. And it's a very important part of your life. I See, here's the funny thing. I was raised in the Catholic Church, and um, uh -huh. I, I've had crazy things happen <laughs> when I was a kid and stuff like that. I have a weird look at religion, but I do have to say this. When people find God and it changes their life for the better, I'm all for it, man. Like, that is very important. You know, a lot yes. of people find God. So you, were you in a bad spot, 23 years old? You were just making the, all the wrong decisions? I mean, I knew about Jesus. I knew about God. Obviously, I was raised in church. But uh, there's a difference about knowing about Jesus and having a relationship with him. So at 23, I had a relationship with him. And that's okay. when your life changes. Knowing about... Like I could know about a mathematic formula and I don't utilize it. What what's the use? How good is that? What about utilizing that math? But what I do about him and created a relationship with him, that's when everything changed, you know. Hmm. So it changed for the better. He started to speak to me in different ways. And even though I had wanted to do things on my own and rush things, I had to just sit back and listen to him. Yeah. It is it's not it's not the easy path, but it's definitely worth it. Sure. Yeah, it seems like you're a happy man. You're in a great place, and look where you are. I mean, you're in the UFC. You got all these wins over here. You're a professional athlete. You're about to get married. You're in Germany. Like, I guess God let let you push you in this path, right? 
Yes, absolutely. Is, can you give me two seconds? Let me get some water. Sure, I'm sorry. yeah. Take your time. It's like early morning over here. Let yeah. just get some water. I'll be, I'll be right back. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm sorry. Guys in the chat, if you are just jumping in, we're with Kennedy and Zet. Chukwu, live on the MMA holes. He's in Germany. It's very early, so if you could hit that like button and, uh, you know, go follow him on Instagram. Go give him a follow over here on the old IG. It's jungleboy underscore Nija, N-A-I-J-A. It's right under the video over there. Go give him a follow. Support Kennedy. I mean, he is something special, and we're learning about, you know, his life. All right. So, okay, let me ask this question. And I know this is crazy for me to ask all these wild questions early in the morning. I really appreciate it. But I got to have to ask you this because you're saving yourself for marriage. Are you a virgin or no? I can't answer that, sir. I can't answer that. <laughs> so, so that's a no. No. <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> you know I have to ask that, right? So, so okay. So um, how... No, it's okay. How do you... How and this is I'll get off this topic afterwards because I'm very immature. How do you um, how do you control yourself? Like I mean, things get crazy, you know. Like how do you just like start praying or like how do you? Stop yeah, the prayer is a huge part of it, you know. Uh, prayer is a huge part of the relationship with Christ. Reading your scripture and I'll be you can't read the scripture. I mean, you have to read it all the time because um, in John it says the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was. Well, the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God mm. and the word was made flesh so if God is the word why won't you read the Bible that means you're kind of cutting off the relationship with Christ if you're not reading your scripture whether well, you believe in Christ or not I have to read my scripture because he shows me so much and I'll be a fool not to do so I've given my life to Christ at 23 he showed me so much broadened my horizon and my vision and um, I've tasted of that blessing so why would I go back to who I used to be gotcha. so I have to stay with Christ the whole time, you know, people make that mistake, especially when they're following Christ. The devil is very wicked, you know. He's very good at tempting people. You know, he whispers in your ear, tells you the wrong thing, and what he says is very sweet to hear. And it's, he caters towards your your fleshly endeavors, your fleshly um, urge, urge, you know. So at the same time, you have to read the scripture because it's it's hard to follow Christ. It's very very hard, sure. but it's worth it, man. It's worth it. And the blessings he gives you are eternal. Now, the blessings the devil gives you, the devil gives you that fast food miracles, very quick mm -hmm. and never last. And he takes more than he gives. But uh, Christ never takes, he gives. You just have to commit. I mean, yeah. Take that leap of faith and commit. It takes faith, you know. It takes faith. But when you do commit, you're going to see things so totally different. He will speak to you. He will speak to you. Now, people say <laughs> things like, I'm not going to believe in God so he shows me himself he reveals himself so he comes down from heaven and talks to me it doesn't work like that you can't test God but in due time when he wants to speak to you he will speak to you and sometimes he speaks to you through human beings through your uh, uh, unknown person a pastor an evangelist through you can be watching TV one day and a uh, pastor appear on TV starts speaking about the, the, the scripture that's him speaking to you but if you're not able to understand it if you're not if you're not aware you know Mm -hmm. of that it passes you by you know you gotta have that spiritual discernment the more you read it in the scripture the more he reveals to you in your last three wins elbows from back mount yes. uh, round three round two knees and punches uh, standing guillotine in your fight against Devin Clark I'm starting to realize your superpower is taking out your sexual frustration on your opponents do you think that's happening <laughs> in the cage <laughs> no no, no? Uh, okay. it's like I'm growing and I have so many tools you know my growth in the, in the chaos of God is the hard work I put out of there you know I, I have all these weapons and ammunition because I I utilize them but I need to be able to make myself comfortable in that uncomfortable situation you know the more I grow the more I rack up experience you know some fighters are very fast learners you know way faster than I am you know they hit the seat and they're just, they're, they're displaying their skills naturally but uh, for me I've always been a slow learner but I've always been the guy to put in the work countless hours over and over and over again and although it might not show <laughs> immediately over the long to the long run it always displays I tell you what, man, you are a very fascinating guy. I, I am enjoying talking to you right now, and I appreciate it. Someone in the chat says that you should have your own podcast. Do you do any streaming or podcasting at all? Um, no, I don't actually don't do that. I'm actually thinking of it, you know. 
I, I'm gonna I'm gr- I'm going to church, grooming myself for to become a pastor, you know. And God is slowly grooming me. You know, by the time the fight game is over, my goal is my two year plan is to build a church in Nigeria, you know, build something in Nigeria, and be able to preach back here in, in America and travel to also Germany and preach in Nigeria to preach and spread God's word. So, so many people that are lacking as far as that department goes of hearing God's word, and be, so many people need to be transformed. So you gotta spread that knowledge because if um, it's almost going to a desert and with your family and you guys are just hungry, starving, your family's on the brink of the feet of dying and then you're walking maybe two kilometers north and you see an oasis of water. Would you tell your family about it for them to come drink or would you just hide it from them? For me, I would tell my family to come drink and that's what I, that's the living water, being God that I try to tell people. I don't want to keep it to myself. You got to spread that knowledge, spread that living water, let everyone drink of it. So that's how I see it. Well said, well said. Um, the light heavyweight division is uh, is pretty packed up. You got, you know, kind of a merry-go-round of champions now, like with Prohaska in his situation. You got Jamal Hill up there. And then you have a fight yes. with Johnny Walker and, and Anthony Smith. And yes. you see some killers yes. coming up. What is what do you what do you think of this weight class right now? Like, who are you targeting? Is there anyone in your path that you want to take on? And how long do you think before you can rise up to the top? I take my time, you know. God leads me as I go, you know. That's the, that's the thing. People keep saying, just call out somebody, you know. I'm not that guy. <coughs> I just want to fight whoever the boss puts in front of me. I'm not trying to take my destiny in my own hands. Let God give me that. Let him bless me that. I mean, he's been doing it for a while. Why, why can't I trust him now? So I'm willing to fight anybody. And as due time comes, the opponents are going to start piling up. I'm going to start fighting, defeating these guys, and slowly making my way up there. And now, I mean, on this three-fight win streak over here, you got to feel really good about yourself. Do you, how many fights do you have left on your contract with the UFC? Um, I think I have two two more fights. I, I can't really remember. I think two more fights, and I believe I'm going to renew my contract with them. Um, it's an amazing organization. Yes, he's awesome, you know. They've done so much for me, you know. I understand people complain about fighter pay or whatever, but then... I'm from Africa. I didn't have nothing. I had nothing, you know, zero, you know. So one thing, you don't want to bite the hand that feeds you, you know. So I'm grateful for the opportunity God gives me. That the thing about fighters, you need to learn how to save money, try to hire a, a financial advisor, stuff like that, and be able to you know, just consume the money once you get paid. That doesn't work. Especially people that don't have families to take care of. There's no reason why you should not have money, you know, mm-hmm. to, to save. You have to just say, once you get paid, divide that money into two, save somebody, and be able to, like, see the future. Get the journal down, write down your future goals or investments you want to achieve, and stop consuming, just lavishing the money. You can't save money that way, you know? So, I understand fighters complain about it, but I'm not complaining. I'm grateful. I'm just working my way up and getting the skills. Dana, Big Mater, Shashemi have taken care of me. I'm blessed, you know? I don't complain. I just work. Super smart, man. Yeah, a lot of guys just blow it on silly stuff, cars, watches, all this crazy stuff, women, whatever. And and here you are. I mean, you know, I, I believe in real estate. I think real estate is a very smart investment. Are you involved yes. in anything like that? That's something I definitely want to be involved in over here in uh, Germany. So I also want to, I'm looking towards that in America, but I haven't really stepped into that. So I'm okay. taking that at a time. I'm not trying to jump into something I'm not aware of or I'm not knowledgeable of. So, you know, Another goal of mine is building a gym, you know, and also building one in that Nigeria and Africa. So being able to help the kids back home. But uh, there's several things I want to achieve in my fight career, and I'm slowly doing so and planning that out. And uh, as time goes, I'm going to be able to achieve that. It's crazy. You're only 30 years old, right? And you're still a young man, and you're probably just about ready to approach your prime. Do you feel like you're in your prime right now, or do you feel it's it's coming? Yeah, I'm slowly. I'm slowly, I'm slowly encroaching that. I'm slowly getting there. I could feel it, you know. I feel like there's so much I have more. There's so much I have to offer, you know, especially to the sports, especially to people's lives too in general. So um, I feel like I'm slowly getting there. I'm making my way there, and um, um, in due time we'll see. We'll see where where God takes me. Do you feel the game is slowing down the more fights you have? So if when you're in the cage, do you feel like you're seeing things clearer? Things are slowing. Yes. Okay, explain that to me. Absolutely, 100%. You know, when I first had my fight the UFC, even in the MMA in general, you know, it feels like everything is just moving so fast, you know. A guy could throw a lazy jab, and it seems like the fastest thing in the world. You know, you're, like, having a hard time processing that. And 
the guy might throw a slow punch and it feels so heavy, you know. But that's your our mind playing tricks on us because your your brain just wants to keep you alive. Anything altering that, like against that, contrary to that, is just against it. The brain tries to shut down. But that, being a fighter at heart, see, human beings are just fighters at heart. The more you do it, the more you see. The more you do it, the more you find progress in that. The more you see, everything slows down, like you just said. So what do you do to wind down besides religion and prayer and, and whatever else is going on there? Is there any uh-huh. guilty pleasures that you have? Is there like a Netflix show you love? Do you binge watch things or music? Uh, I like I like archery. I like going to the gun range. I like going to the botanical gardens and just reading. You know, I like reading a lot of books. I like I like bowling. I like bowling, you know. I like walk, go to the preserve ridge, the preserve trail, and the walking, you know, just just the visualizing, doing a lot of visualization. So that's something I love to do. I love playing soccer a lot, you know. Soccer is one of the things I played from Africa as a kid. So I love playing soccer, you know. I love playing basketball. There's several things I love doing, more like outdoorsy things, you know. You're going to be a real problem for this weight class. <laughs> I can just tell you don't lead the crazy lifestyle you're zoned in. You can tell, like you're you're not getting yourself into any trouble, and uh, it feels like you're on a crash course for some big fights in the future. I mean, how excited are you to fight these top guys? Like, do you foam at the mouth saying, "Oh my god"? Like, do you watch a fight with Jamal Hill and say, "Okay, how do I match up against this guy"? Do you think those things? Yeah, for the guys in the top ten, I always watch them. You know, I'll, I'll try to like get my fight journal out and dissect their skills. Put their weaknesses down and write their strengths down. Write things I could do to mitigate or go around it to capitalize on the weaknesses. Also try to perfect what they're weak at and make it my strengths. So there's several things I do. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> sorry, I had Bless to sneeze. You. My bad. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, there's several things I do. Is I, I I watch those guys, but I don't just. I try to take it a step at a time and fight the guys right in front of me before I, you know dwell on that to do the fighters on top mm-hmm. I try to like speak by I don't try to like leap and look at the, the future without living in the present you know I try to fight the guys that give me a slowly as time goes I'm gonna make it up there you know it's funny uh, how, are you familiar with Ian Gary Ian Gary just had a massive win recently oh yeah the Irish Isn't kid it the welterweight the uh, yeah, the welterweight. from Ireland yeah so he's not in any rush either and he's just he looks so good okay but he's slowly moving up. He's like he's calling out guys like right ahead. He's not going too crazy. It feels like that's smart because you do see a lot of these prospects come up quickly and get rushed. Do you believe you think yes. this way because of past losses and you've learned from those mistakes, or how, like why do you have Again, this mindset? The, the only reason I think that way because I'm a, so I don't. I'm not in a rush. I wanted to accumulate the knowledge, as I said. I wanted to rack up that knowledge, that experience. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to rush things. Slowly as I continue to rack up that knowledge, I'm going to be able to be in the position to display to the octagon. So I'm not in no rush, I'm not in no hurry. I, I always knew I was a slow learner as a kid, but I always put in the work, as I said. So I'm not in no rush at all. I'm just taking my time, working, displaying my skills, one fight at a time. And to, when God gets me to that point, I'll capitalize on opportunities. Has there ever been in a situation where you looked across the cage and you were kind of like, wow, I can't believe I'm fighting this guy? Has that ever happened? Not really. I've, I've thought about that, but it's more like I can't believe I'm in this position to fight you know, in a sport that I always watch on TV, you know? So that's the way I always visualize it. Not really the person I'm fighting because I'm really not afraid of any man, but uh, I really, I'm kind of surprised, you know, being able to, see the sport and, and shoot it as a goal to make it there and being able to be there and, and you know fight in that in that sport so it's pretty cool how about the first time bruce buffer we had the pleasure of talking to him a couple of times super nice dude the first time he screamed your name like like what, what yeah. was that like <laughs> yeah it was crazy you know I, I i froze up you know i got locked up you know out the gun jitters adrenaline up all, all you could all, everything you could name it you know I felt, man, I felt overwhelmed. So, you know, it was pretty cool, you know, getting to look up at the jumbo try to see your face on it and see your name on it. But um, it's uh, something that till you get there, you won't ever understand, you know. So I tell some of my friends who are not fighters so, all the time, but um, they try to visualize visualize what it, it may seem like, what it, it could never, you could never understand till you're in that position 
Yeah, it's got to be something else. Has there ever been a time where you were in the cage and you looked into the crowd and you're like, oh my God, I can't believe this person is there? Because I've seen you've, you've been on a lot of pay per views 288, 272, 259. Yes. Like, has there been a time where you looked out and you're like, oh my God, I, that person's watching me fight? Uh, yeah, just data. <laughs> Looking outside the cage and seeing data watching me. And Heidi, Heidi did. Yeah, she's like the our UFC mother, you know, always taking care of us, you know, getting to see her case side, watching me fight. It's like my big sister, you know, it's pretty cool, you know, and see Dana White watching me fight, you know, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. You just have to make sure you level up. You don't want to go there and embarrass yourself. Sure. I mean, I, I bet it's hard. It's got to be so much pressure, man. Uh, but you seem like you have a calm demeanor. Like, I would be frantic. Have you ever had a panic attack or anything like that? Have you ever, like, almost lost it? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've several times in the in the back, you know, not really in the back on fight day, mostly during fight week, you know, I'm overthinking it. I'm overthinking it. I'm not living in the present. I'm thinking about the future, thinking about, oh, how about if I lose? How about if I win? Blah, 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 you know? But I'm never living in the present. But now I'm slowly being a veteran now, slowly racking up that experience. And now I'm being, I'm calm during fight week, calm and collected, and I'm, I'm having fun with the fun now. That's pretty cool. Hey, if you have a second, do you mind if I ask people from the chat to ask questions for you? Would you take a couple of questions from the live oh, absolutely. chat? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. okay, chat, here we go. Here's your opportunity. We have Kennedy in Zachuku live on the MMA Holes. Lightweight, three-fight win streak, three-fight finishing streak. Bad, bad man right here. If you have a question for him, be nice. <laughs> and ask away. We have a very <laughs> <So good. laughs> We have a wild they're gonna be asking your penis size and all that stuff. Have you ever been asked that in an interview? <laughs> no, actually. <laughs> okay, a, a below or be a, above average. I can't hear you. What do you say? Below or above average? Like what are, what what what's the question? Your penis. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> Welcome to the MMA holes. Okay, all right, we'll stop asking those questions. Um, they're asking if you can take a joke. Clearly, you can take a joke. You seem like you have a pretty good sense of humor, right? Yes, sir. Okay, good, good. Uh, let's see. All right, we asked that question. Do you feel... Uh, oh, here we go. Do you feel conflicted praising God and smashing someone's <laughs> face in? Okay, this is actually an interesting question. Some people say, you know, I like to thank God after a win... But in at the end of the day, you are beating another human being up. So how does that work with with believing in God and, and fighting? <laughs> it's a it's a hard thing to you know process, especially for the first time. You know, being able to fight and you know, knowing that you're hurting someone else. You know, but there's a fight like to it. You know, I know that with everything I get from the fight game, I'm using it to praise God. You know, and uh, I know it's just business. I don't try to create some type of animosity between me and my my rival or opponent. I just know it's strict business. And after the fight, I'm willing to talk. Whether I lose or win, I'm always going to give praise to God. And um, I, everything I, I the, the, the revenue I generate from there, I know that I'm always going to give God the praise afterwards. So it's a it's a hard to process. It's a hard, it's a hard thing to think of when you're actually hurting someone, you know. But um, being able to you know, listen to Christ as time goes on, he will really create that 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 grace that leads you through that. Okay, I have another weird question for you, and this is from our moderator. Uh, you're f uh, familiar okay. with Jorginho Rosenstrike, right? You're familiar with this guy? Yes. Okay. Good, uh, Biggie boy. He's a heavyweight, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. he does fall. He does fall. Um, Giant Tid, uh, Ameda, something like that. That's him. right. Wow, Ameda is a very scary guy, right? He's he's very talented. Yeah, very good. Jiu-Jitsu sick. He's a very powerful guy. You know? I feel like in heavyweight, he's so um, fast, so much faster than the heavyweights because the heavyweights are more heavier. Mm -hmm. It's hard to carry that body composition and move it around so quick. So he's he's capitalizing on their, their lack of agility. And, um, he's very good. His jiu-jitsu is very sick. So. Well, I'm going to show you something. This might disturb you here. Uh, Jarzinho Rosenstrike took his pictures with uh, the UFC, okay? And I'm going to show you something here. Uh -huh. I'm going to I'm going to see if you notice this, okay? Um, <coughs> so if you look, this is his his shorts. The before shot shows a bulge in his shorts, and then the day of the fight, they photoshopped the bulge out. What do you think about? It? Should they have left the bulge in? <laughs> 
Man, I don't even know about that. I'm not even asking that question. <laughs> now, is that, and Man, this is not even, hilarious. we didn't Photoshop this. The be, this is actually the before and after over here. We, we unlocked the mystery and we're like, what is going on here? Did you know about this? No, I hold that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried about all that. Come on, man. Okay. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> it's too early for this shit, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were laughing at that. That's that's kind of crazy, but that did happen. That's actually true. Well, listen, Kennedy, I'm not going to subject you to more of this craziness any longer. <laughs> um, I really appreciate you coming by, and uh, you you have your sights set on really good things, and I'm I'm an instant fan. Um, I, I appreciate what you do, how you take that walk to the cage, and you do what you do out there. I mean, viciously uh, compete and uh, have res and a very respectable person. So uh, much respect from me as a host over here. Thank you so much. I appreciate it for having me. And you guys do so much as far as maximizing the platform to spread us and keeping the publicity high. So thank you so much. Yeah, I see a lot of best of lucks in the chat. I think you create a, a bunch of new fans from our community are jumping <laughs> aboard. Even though you beat up Devin Clark, it's fine. We forgive you, okay? <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's really a pleasure to have you come on here. Always feel free to come back on and uh, have a great trip in Germany, okay? Thank you so much, sir. Appreciate you. And I'll give you one chance over here if you'd like to shout out sponsors or anything like that. Now's the time to do so. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I do want to shout out my sponsors. First, my church, the Midday Worship Center, my Pastor Ben Ebo, and uh, Lake Points. Um, Lake Points, well, it's Rock Wall. And my Pastor Josh Howerton and Pastor Steve Harding. And uh, also Matt Wheeler, our gospel leader. And also, I want to shout out my other sponsors Allied Rights Chiropractic, Urban Ledges, Jim. Um, I can't remember. So I have a couple more. Wait a minute. Uh, wait a minute. I'm uh, forgetting. It's so early in the morning that I can't even process it right. 47 May. Uh, Joey, he, he's my uh, meal sponsor. Yeah, uh, Fit Factory in Mesquite. He helps provide my meals. And uh, he's an amazing guy. And uh, those are my sponsors. I want to give a shout out to them. I appreciate you stopping by, especially this early in the morning. It really means a lot to uh, to us have you here, and uh, wish you nothing but success in the future. Okay. Thank you, sir. I really appreciate you. God bless you. Okay, there he is, live on the MMA holes, ladies and gentlemen. A round of applause for Kennedy in the Chukwu, live on the show. Thank you, Thank Kennedy. You. There he is. How yes, about sir. that? What do you say? What do you say, chat? Oh my God! What an interview! What a guy! What a guy! I like him, man. He's he's a cool dude. He's a cool that that's a bad man right there with a beautiful heart. Like such a sweetheart, man. Good human. Yeah, I agree, man. He and he took on the <laughs> he took on he took on Biggie Boy's package as well, you know. But it, here's the thing, he's in Germany right now and uh for him to take this interview is is very uh very kind of him to do. Like he really did not have to take this interview at this time of the morning but you know we still got I, I gotta be a you know i gotta be an mma hill i gotta ask the silly questions and uh, he handled them very well so i am a fan i can't wait to see i do this guy I, i'm gonna say this right now top five easy he'll be a top five lightweight easy easy like it's not even like look at look at his resume here I mean, it, it, it's it's a it's a crazy story. He's twelve three and zero. If you just jump in now, he had one amateur fight, knockout first round, bang, he's a pro. Knockout second round, uh, unanimous decision, bang, he's in the contender series. Split decision, you know, in over his head, still wins the fight, still wins the fight, does not get the contract. Then he goes two fights. Knockout first round, knockout second round, bang, he's back in the head, uh, the contender series. Knockout first round contender series, welcome to the UFC. Loses to Paul Craig in his debut. Uh, the arm triangle in the third round, Paul Craig likes to, you know, throw up crazy shit. And then bang, three fight win streak. Unanimous decision. Uh, you got the, the hooks in the second round. Uh, punches standing TKO in the third round, Danilo Marquez. Then he takes a little skit over here. Standing elbows, Don Jung, who's a very tough dude. Uh, Nikolai Nigger Moreno, split decision. Almost gets the job done there. 
split decision loss, and now here he is in a three-fight win streak. Finish third round, finish second round, finish second round. What the heck, man? Let me see. How many UFC fights? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine UFC fights, 30 years old. Nine UFC fights, and then add two contender series fights on top of that. 11 in front of Dana White. My God. That is a wild, that is a wild run for this young man. Craziness, man. I am such a fan. Such a fan. Even though he took on Devin Clark, and I'm still a fan. Wonderful, wonderful. D-Man. How dare you, Mystical Mouse. How dare you? Vivian. How dare you? Thank you for the $2 donation. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. I'm going to catch up on a couple alerts over here. Then we're going to talk about uh, PFL and Nganu. Uh, we, we had uh, Kennedy's thoughts on PFL and Nganu. That I mean, Kennedy's got to get on the Africa card. I mean, that's that's a no-brainer right there. Casey Jones, double champ. Let's go, Casey. Thank you, Casey. Let's Thank go, you, Sam. Casey. Rico Calde has become a member, member courtesy of Casey Jones. And we thank Casey Jones for that. He needs to connect with someone like uh, uh, Nick Sick. Oh, man. I tell you what. He's he's loyal to his gym, right? They kind of found him and molded him. He's had some pretty good success. Casey Jones, another double champ membership. Thank you so much, Casey Jones. Appreciate that. Let's go, champ. Uh, JC117 is a member. Thank you. According to Casey Jones. Thanks to Casey Jones for membering up over there. If you haven't hit the like button, I don't know what the hell you're doing, man. Hit that like button. Appreciate it. Wonderful, wonderful. We got D-Man. Listen, yours Kennedy is out here saying some real shit. Preach IT Kennedy. Yeah, listen. Listen, Kennedy is a man of God, and he and the way he puts it out there, you can understand why. You can definitely understand why. Kennedy is, uh, you know, he, he's got it all together for sure. Thank you, D-Man. Appreciate that. Let's go, champ. So, Carl coming in. 20 months as a member says, Chris, I like Kennedy. Hanging with the boys. Hanging with the boys. Thank you, whatever shit takes. I appreciate that very much so. So, we are here live on a Wednesday night. We're going to roll into... Actually, let me talk about my sponsors real quick, and then we'll roll into my thoughts on Nganu on the PFL. I spoke about it a lot on our gaming channel. You should subscribe to our gaming channel because we'll just break out and start talking about things, diving into things if they break while we're live. Um, I could have went on this channel and spoke about it, but we were gaming already, so we just talked about it there. I'll talk about some more in a sec. But uh, let's uh, give a shout-out to CBDX.com, promo code MMAHOLES for 20% off. THC products, you get high, okay? You get high with this stuff, so go to cbdx.com if you'd like to get high and use our promo code MMAHOLES for 20% off. Get a free gift on your first order. Must be 21 plus or older to purchase. And if you're going to place a bet on this weekend's fights, uh, we have an interesting card. We'll talk about that in a sec as well. Uh, MyBookie.ag is the website. That's the one we use. Use promo code MMAHOLES for 100% match on your first order deposit 100 match of your first deposit mybookie.ag promo code mma h-o-l-e-s head rush shout out to head rush premium clothing two links are in the description 20 percent off code mma h-o-l-e-s fortune favors the brave so if you want to look like a badass and feel like a badass and wear premium clothing check out head rush's website use the promo code mma h-o-l-e-s and get the discount for a limited time only. Sheath underwear, promo code MMAHOLES for 20% off the best underwear you'll ever put on your bottom. So check out Sheath underwear. Link in the description, promo code MMAHOLES for 20% off. And if you're going to watch the ESPN fights this weekend, use our link, ESPN Plus, in the description. We get a little commission. Thank you very much. All right. Ah, da, 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 da. All right, we're live from the Sinosi Sanction Studios. We had a fucking beast of a light heavyweight on Kennedy Inzuchukwu. If you'd like to watch that interview, if you're jumping in now, go run it back. Let me know in the comments section. But let's talk about let's talk about Francis real quick because I didn't get a chance 
to hear the people's thoughts on our channel. So let me know your thoughts on that. Hold on one second here. Dropping in the Discord. Ba, 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 ba. But Tra Francis Ngannou signs a deal with the PFL. And a lot of people have been really riding Francis pretty hard. A lot of people have been going crazy saying Francis made a big mistake in leaving the UFC. And I was scratching my head as well. We've done some streams where I'm like, I don't know, man, about this move over to um, uh, leaving the UFC. I think it's a big mistake. Um, but he landed on his feet. He landed a deal that is actually pretty interesting. It's pretty favorable. It's not a long-term locked up contract with this company. In fact, it's only like a fight or two. It's not, if even that, I don't even know, but he gets a lot in the deal. It looks like he's going to be waiting for the tournament to end. And then maybe the winner of the heavyweight tournament will face Francis, which kind of makes sense because I guess the UFC, uh, the PFL could say, well, okay, we're giving the million dollars to the heavyweight. I don't know. I don't know how that's going to fucking work. But um, but anyway, yeah, the heavyweight that wins the tournament, probably going to face uh, Francis Ngannou. I've got a storm in the back that's going nuts. And um, Francis will probably get a fight that he could win over there. So a winnable fight, PFL, gets paid a boatload load of money. And let's look at the... What Ben Rothwell put out here real quick, because Ben Rothwell shot his shot, and I don't blame him. But a couple of things that stand out in the deal. We'll get your thoughts as well. Guarantee a high seven-figure purse for each fight. So my man is getting a high. Now He's not just getting a mill. He's getting a high seven-figure purse for each fight. Uh, a split of the event net profits, which is probably not anything crazy, but still he's getting net profits for the event. A signing bonus or salary to serve as a brand ambassador for PFL. So now he's going to be a brand ambassador for the company. Uh, the right to have his own sponsors in the cage. I mean, now, what? So he could be hitting sponsors over the head and saying, Hey, man, if you want to sponsor the baddest man on the planet, well, you'll be on the cage and collect that money as well, which fighters can't do in the UFC. Non-exclusive uh, with regards to boxing, so he can box Anytime he wants. No championship clause or other extensions. So if he wins a belt with PFL, he's not kind of stuck over there. He could do whatever the hell he wants. And then this is kind of cool. A minimum salary possibly as high as $1 million for his opponent. So even his opponent makes out on the deal. That's pretty damn good. That's pretty good. He could do whatever the hell he wants. So next year he'll probably box someone... Um, unless he could slip something in before this year is done. It sounds like he wants to do like a tune-up boxing fight from what the rumors are saying. So he'll probably fight, I don't know, a nobody, beat him up, get a win, keep himself active in some sort of way. And then next year early, fight in the PFL. He was saying either February or March. My man is, you know, he's going to be pushing 40 soon. But at least he got a big paycheck over here. He gets the box as well. He got everything he needs. Now on the other side of the thing... Uh, people are like, well, what is PFL going to do? PFL is going to fold. They're going to fall apart. Uh, I don't think that's the case. Um, PFL, they have some smart people in play. They're under ESPN as well, just like the UFC. They're not just going to throw everything at a guy and say, okay, if it doesn't work, we're going to sink. I'm sure they have backup plans here. And Francis may just fight one time. Francis, Francis may not even fight. We We don't know. Like, this, he's going to fight next year? Like, we don't know. This could be a publicity stunt. Who knows? But you look at Francis's uh, Instagram, and here he is. This is a first look. Francis Ngannou getting fitted up. I mean, it's it's kind of a bummer. You know, he's not in the UFC anymore. He's in PFL. Your heavyweight champion has moved over there. There's some of these shots. He's looking a little thick. Not like, I don't know, his face looking. He's looking a little, I don't know. He's looking, he's definitely looking like off-season Francis, although he's still a very big, muscular, scary dude. But there he is with the PFL gloves. What do you think about how he looks? There's been a ton of things going out there uh, about this situation all over social media. The exposure has been through the roof for Francis. I think he wins. I think PFL wins because now people are talking about PFL. Um, I think it works for everybody. And I got to be honest, it works for the fans more than anything. We win in this. 
Because if PFL does great with this thing and it, they go to Africa, like if PFL goes to Africa with Francis Ngannou and they throw an event over there and, you know, there's some buzz for the PFL because of this guy, I mean, that's, that's, it can only help. And then there's like that Hail Mary. And we brought it up to Kennedy. There's that Hail Mary thing, you know, fingers crossed. But what if, like, what if we have a crossover? What if, like Jake Paul put it out there on his Twitter, what if we actually, they're both under ESPN, what if PFL and the UFC come up with a, a situation where they say, hey, let's throw the Africa event together. It's not as costly if you got two organizations going together, splitting the bill. You don't have to pay Francis Ngannou because PFL already did that, so it works for the UFC. You take your UFC guys, you take John Jones leading the way, you go over to Africa, and you throw the biggest, biggest event of all time. Now, Kennedy kind of chuckled because, you know, Dana White does not like to do things like this. You know, Dana White's not the type of guy that's going to say, oh, uh, hey, I'm going to... I'm going to uh, merge with this company. I'm going to collaborate. he been there, done that. You know? Dana usually shoots, chews up the company and spits them out. Like, that's all he cares about. And I get it because UFC is a top dog. But at the end of the day, I don't think it would really hurt. I mean, unless Francis Ngannou goes in there and knocks out John Jones. But I think it would be massive. It would literally be the biggest thing of all time. Isn't PFL supposed to buy Belter? No, that's been squashed. That's been squashed for a while. That is out. Especially they just threw all that money at Francis. I, I'm, I highly doubt Bellator is in play with PFL. But PF, uh, Bellator is like shopping themselves around. They're still apparently fine. They're just shopping around seeing. But what do you guys think? I mean, what do you think about the, the Francis situation going over to PFL, his contract, his deal? Uh, did PFL make a mistake? Did Francis make a mistake? Did the UFC make a mistake? Is it good? Is it bad? Give me your thoughts. In our live chat. Uh, let's see. I say in five years, the UFC is no longer the top target. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Sausage says, I don't know about that, but I mean, that'd be crazy. Wow. Uh, Dana will buy PFL just to, to fire France. <laughs> Dude, that'd be amazing. Yeah, Dana did the ultimate troll job. We spoke about it on the second channel. Dana White literally said, oh, Francis, you want to break the news? We're going to break the news about Dustin Poirier, BMF belt. We'll get into that in a little, a little, a little bit. We'll segue in a sec, but let's get our thoughts on the Francis situation first. Good for Francis. PFL is trying to get big enough uh, that Endeavor <laughs> buys them. UFC don't need Francis. True, they don't. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. Would have been better if they announced a fight at the same time. Uh, not sure if I'll remember by 2024. Yeah, it is a little weird, the timing of it, right? It's like, okay, great, Francis is here in PFL, you know, big deal. But it's so true. Dana White drops his news. And, you know, if I wasn't talking about this right now, I think a lot of people probably aren't talking about this anymore. It's already old news. Dana White kind of... And he dropped some more news about Australia in September. And, and the UFC signed a deal with Australia uh, for the next four years. They're going to have three guaranteed pay-per-view events in Australia, one being this September. So that's actually pretty big news, too. So Dana White is just dropping news left and right to say, yeah, let's just forget about the whole Francis situation. Don't mind the shower in the background. Uh, despite being strong enough to defend yourself, uh, hopeless to a girl with a knife and a telephone. What? I think Francis will be able to actually hold the belt in PFL. Yeah, he's not going to be in the tournament. He's going to be like the end, the final boss when, when the tournament's over. That's what I think is going to happen. Or they have that side thing that they're doing in PFL that Jake Paul's invo involved in, who he's fighting next year as well. So... The, there is probably going to be a card in 2024 where Jake Paul fights, I don't know, maybe Nate in MMA after the boxing situation and Francis Ngannou drops in there and fights the heavyweight that wins the tournament. Kind of makes sense since Jake is fighting 2024 and Francis is fighting 2024. They're doing like a side thing for pay-per-views. So tournament's not necessarily for everyone on the roster. 
PFL needs to add more heavyweights, whether it's free agents or people from other promotions, to make it uh, tough for Francis. There will not be... there. This is how I look at it. They're pay, paying Francis so much money that they're not looking to make this tough. They're looking to make it look interesting, but good business is Francis keeps winning in PFL. Like, if you think about it, they've signed some pretty decent names that left the UFC, but they left the UFC on the downward slope, you know, and PFL kind of gobbled them up. Who has looked good from the UFC besides uh, the Canadian Mercier, whatever the hell that guy's name is, Obin Mercier. That guy's looked great. He won the, the championship. But other than that, you know, Pettis goes over there, gets stomped. Um, who else? Uh, the dude that just, uh, what the fuck's his name? I forgot his name already. Uh, help me out. But Dana said they made a mistake letting him go. He gets stomped in the PFL. Um, you know, guys are just getting run over over there. Jeremy Stevens is another one. That's not the guy I was thinking about, but Jeremy's looked horrible ever since the UFC. Francis is a banknote uh, for them. This was in the making for three years, according to Francis. Maybe. Oh, Thiago Santos looked like trash. He wasn't the guy I was thinking about, but he looked bad. Marlon Moraes, another one. And he wasn't the guy. Burgos, thank you, Lil Seal. Burgos was the guy I was thinking about. Yeah, think about think about all the guys that were named that left the UFC and the UFC left them let them go at the right time. But then Shane Burgos was the guy that Dana White actually said, "Ah, oh, we 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 dropped the ball on that one," and then he loses in his debut to PFL. Now PFL is it's not like they need those guys to really win. They go over there, they lose. It is what it is, you know. You just pick up another reject and see if they if they win. But with Francis throwing this kind of money towards Francis, you kind of need him to keep winning. Because if he goes in there and just gets flatlined by a heavyweight, that's a problem. That that's a little bit of a problem. So I have a feeling that Francis will get winnable fights. I tell you what, they threw Ben Ben Rothwell threw his name in the hat, and people will say he's with BKFC. I don't know how many fights he has. Thank you, two joints. I don't know how many fights Ben has in the UFC um, in BKFC left. He's going to come on the show in two weeks, so we'll we'll talk to him about that. But, I mean, listen, I understand why everyone would pick Francis Ngannou over Ben Rothwell. But, PFL, if Ben is dangling out there, you bring Ben in. You bring him to the PFL. You just do it. You bring him in. Also, Ben Rothwell says he really would love to showcase his grappling. Like, that's something he always regretted. Any regret that he talks about is his, his grappling. So who knows? Maybe Ben the wrestler comes in. Ben the jujitsu guy or whatever. I would like to see it. But we're a little biased over here. Don't forget all those fighters who just popped for PEDs. Yeah, that's another thing. Who knew that PFL tested? And apparently they do. If you're getting popped in PFL, that's not good. Because I don't think they got that... I don't think they got that USADA strictness. I don't know. Yeah, that's kind of wild. They, people pop it in PFL. Anyway, I think it's good. As a fan, I don't think we should be arguing about it. I think we should embrace this. If you're not excited, that's fine. If you're like, ah, oh, who cares? You know, we got John Jones. That's fine. But if, if you're just trying to keep shitting on Francis Ngannou for this or PFL for making a stupid move or UFC, who cares? I mean, just let, let it play out and hopefully it's entertaining. Hopefully it's more content for us to watch. So that's what I think about the Francis situation. Before we get into the Poirier and Gaethje and everything else that's popping, has anyone seen McGregor forever yet? Has anyone seen this yet? Let me know yes or no in the chat. We saw most of the first episode. Um, we still have to watch the rest. We'll probably watch the rest tomorrow. But let me know what you if you've seen it. Let me know your thoughts. A lot of people have blasted through it super quick. Um, I don't have that time. I don't know how the fuck people just blast through it. But... Um, yeah, hopefully tomorrow we can get through it. I'll give you a full review, but I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I thought of the first one after your thoughts. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Jesse on Fire and Guru. Yeah, dude, a lot of people were on it, and, uh, and they missed us. I don't know how the fuck they missed us, but hey, listen, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, they had, they had channels on there I never even fucking heard of. I'm like, what is going on here? Like, complete nobodies. But I think they were looking for things like kind of shitting on Connor. I think that's what it was. I don't know. I didn't see the whole series. I got to see it. I, where was Jesse on? I didn't see. I saw I saw the guru thing. He was on the last episode. 
um, right before uh, True Jordy. So good for him, man. But I didn't see uh, I didn't see Jesse on fire on it yet. So I got to check that out. I'm on episode two. Uh, good so far, Connor forever, and no any good. Francis is losing my attention. Says no chicken. Same on episode two. Francis is not a great fighter. He just have heavy hands and power. I totally disagree. Uh, what Francis did with one leg against Cyril Gunn and just took him down and uh, just kind of adjusted in the fight. I thought it was very. I thought it was awesome. And then how he fought Stipe the second time after Stipe gassed him out. And then Francis went back in there, readjusted his game, and made Stipe look stupid. I think Francis Francis is so good, man. The problem is now he's pushing 40, but I think Francis is very good. Oh, he's just talking on it? Oh, okay. Yeah, there was a lot of just voices on there. I couldn't make out who the fuck was talking. I don't think I heard him yet. I got I to gotta listen. The emails are the um, uh, matters of... <laughs> that's right, man. Listen! Listen. No no, no big deal. No biggie over here. What I do have to say about this McGregor thing so far, I've only watched, like, majority... I've, I've watched up to the, the Habib fight. And then I, 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 I saw him emotional afterwards, and then we had to do family shit. But I got to say this. It is, like, light years better than that nonsense he released before. The, the McGregor movie, like, like I, Jesse said it today, and I've said this before, um, that movie made no sense. You know, the movie was just, it was basically, it was a cliffhanger, and it just was, it wasn't done as good as this. That freaking, that first episode was so good, man. So good. Like, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Like, it brings you back to the old days of Connor. It strips him down nicely. And, um, you know. Even if you're a hater, I think you could enjoy, you know, just just uh, you know, the craft of the documentary that 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 they put together on Netflix. It's pretty good. Netflix does a great job with their documentaries, and and this one so far, I still got to watch the whole thing. It could completely fall apart. I didn't like the first McGregor movie. I hated it. We watched it on air with the peeps, but this one so far is, dude, it's 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 like riveting, man. They show the the foot with my foot was a balloon. They show the actual injury. You know, it, it, this guy has has his like every fighter goes into fights injured and stuff like that. But the difference with Connor and these other fighters is he's never pulled out. You know, he's he's never done that. He's never pulled out of a fight. He goes in there, he gets injured. You know, he gets he gets injured. He still fights. So a lot of what is this guy spamming over here? What is this guy? I don't even know what the fuck he's doing. All right, get out of here. What are you doing here? What are you doing here, Baba? Just say it once and I'll read it. Why do you guys spam it? You spam it, I'm not going to read it. Uh, let's see. The guy who hit him, that was like, just say it once, bro. The chat's not flying. <laughs> just say it one time. Uh, let's see. 12 year olds behind productions. <laughs> uh, let's see. The guy who hit him was, that was interesting. We need Connor to fight. It must be Chandler. I, I Dude, like, I'll make the fight already. Make the fight. Uh, foot was a balloon. No girls fight him. Connor never pulls out. All right. Anyway, uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on the Connor documentary because we didn't even put it in a title description. And uh, I, I want to see the whole thing before. Uh, yeah. You know, I think I'll do. I'll just like, I don't know. I'll watch the whole documentary and then we'll, maybe we'll just do a stream where we kind of go through the whole thing. If I like it. If it sucks, I'm not going to waste my time. All right, so ba -da -ba 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 -da 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 -da. Okay. So, oh, we got to delete all these fucking messages. Uh, ding. all right, so Poirier versus Gaethje, BMF belt. I'm just going to say this. I said it when it was announced for uh Masvidal versus Diaz. I didn't hate the fight. I hated the belt. I thought it was the dumbest thing ever. I understood from a business perspective. I get it. I always get when the UFC is doing something business-wise, I, I get it. I understand it. But I wish it was a little more subtle. UFC puts together this fight over here. Gaethje versus Poirier, the sequel. Poirier, of course, won the first one. This is a different Gaethje this time around. It's a, Actually, it's a different Poirier, too. They put this fight together. 
And in order to sell a pay-per-view at 291, they say, well, it's got to be a belt. And I, I, I guess what I'm thinking is they couldn't get Izzy versus Pereira. I, I have a feeling that's what they were going to do. So then they put Pereira versus Blahovich, him moving up. I, I think it makes all the sense to do Izzy Pereira 3 on this card. But I bet Izzy said to the UFC, yo, I'm chilling. I just got my redemption win. I'm going to party and have a good time. I'm chill. Like a champion should be able to do. Unlike Al Jermaine Sterling. Unlike Al Jermaine Sterling. How does Izzy say, yeah, I'm chill. I'm just going to hang out. Like, Because, I mean, honestly, he should be fighting Pereira on this card. It should be the main event. But it's not. Pereira is on this card. He's fighting Jan Blahovich away class up. So that whole trilogy is put on hold. They put together Poirier versus Gaethje. Main event. It's going to be a very good fight. But this is not car crash Gaethje anymore. This is a little more technical Gaethje. So we could have a complete different fight here. This is not the type of guy that is the human highlight reel anymore. He's actually a way smarter fighter, uh, Gaethje. And he wants to get this redemption win. If he goes in guns blazing against Poirier, he's going to get smashed. So, two things. It, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, it's going to be a decent fight, but it's not going to be the fight the first time around. The first time around, was that was, that was the fight that we're going to expect to see here. It's not the case. It could be a completely different fight. Main event BMF. What do you think about this in the chat? Because... Dana White pretty much said he's done with the BMF thing. And now he just miraculously pulls it out and say it was vacated. We just so happened to throw it on this card. It's a pay-per-view. Like, who is he fooling? And what if this fight falls apart? Then the main events could be Pereira versus Blahovich. Are you going to throw an interim strap there? Or are you going to put Ferguson or Bobby Green, who could be technically BMFs over here. You see him down below over there. You're going to throw them to fill in. God forbid someone gets hurt, which is probably going to be the plan. Nonsense. Listen, it's a good fight. And the card itself is very entertaining. But this is not a fucking pay-per-view, guys. It's not. When we put it on Twitter and people are like, oh, dude, I don't know. It's a good card. What the fuck are you complaining about? It's a good card, but it's not a fucking, it's not worth $85. I'm talking about the paying people here. It's not. It's not worth it. You mean to tell me I need to pay $85 because you, you're putting fantasy belt on the line? A belt that means no, it means nothing. There is, there is nothing. It means absolutely nothing, this belt. That's why I should pay $85. Is, is, that, is that what it is? Who cares? Francis is yesterday's news. UFC is... All right, you might be behind. It, it is. It's very cringe, man. It's a cringe move. And I, I feel bad, man. I feel bad for, you know... Where's this going to be at? This is at... This, this is in Utah, right? I think this... Oh, yeah. Salt Lake City. Yeah. This is in Utah. I feel bad for them. They're being conned. It's a con. It's a con of your $85. Now, listen. Blahovich versus Pereira is very interesting. Because if Pereira wins, he beats the guy... That beat Izzy when he moved up. It's kind of like bragging rights. I get it. Costa versus Aleskarov. Okay, it's a good fight. But does a casual know about this fight? I mean, probably not. Costa's funny as fuck. But Ikram Aleskarov? Do casuals? No, not really. Tony Ferguson versus Bobby Green? Okay, both fighters are entertaining. It's an interesting matchup. But on a main card of a pay-per-view at this point, you're lucky if this should be a pre... This, this should be like a... I don't know. A, Headlining the prelims? I mean, let's be serious here. Michael Chiesa versus Kevin Holland, very interesting. It's a very interesting fight. Chiesa versus Holland. Holland has a chance to be ranked. Dangerous fight against Chiesa. Chiesa fighting a guy under him. Interesting. Uh, Steven Thompson versus Michelle Pereira. Good fight. Lewis versus uh, Marcos Rogerio de Lima. Okay. I don't know, man. I, I I mean I I don't know like it's fun as an MMA fan I'm gonna pay the eighty five dollars because I do this show, 
but I'm going to be completely transparent with you right now. And ESPN Plus is our sponsor. If I was not doing this show, I'd be looking for a stream. That's crystal clear. And that I, you would have no problems getting. Completely. I've been spoiled. Is it worth $85, Rico? Are you are you paying for that pay-per-view? Because you need your head examined to pay $85 for a fake belt, unless you're a WWE fan. What does it really mean? What does this BMF belt mean? Nothing. If someone wins it, are they going to have tears in their eyes? You don't defend it. There's no real rhyme or reason why you even deserve fighting for it. It means jack shit. It should be called the jack shit belt. That's what it should be called. I would pay the $85 if they were fighting for the jack shit belt. It should be called the, hey, I just fucked you, bent you over, and stole $85 belt. That's what it should be called. It's nonsense. The BMF belt is nonsense. Dana White even rolls his eyes anytime it was brought up in the past. It's stupid. It's a stupid, stupid situation. You're taking a fun fight and making it stupid with the belt. The no lube belt, yes. It's crazy, man. I just, I would love to the UFC to say, hey guys, we couldn't find a pay per view. Uh, we couldn't find a, a title fight to put together. We just couldn't do it. Nothing lined up for that date. We need a pay per view for that month. We're going to put Poirier versus Gaethje there. Five rounds. It's a badass fight. If you want to watch it, watch it. But no. They got to pull the fucking casual fans in, right? They got to say, hey, it's for a shiny fake belt. Dumb. It's the dumbest shit ever. It's insulting to the fans. And I love the UFC. I love a circus. I love all that shit. But this is not it, man. The BMF BMF belt should have died with Jorge Masvidal. When he left the UFC, it should have fucking died with him. But no, it's vacated. How do you vacate a belt that means absolutely nothing? Nothing! Boo! Boo the belt! Boo it! This is just facts, guys. This is facts. It's a great card that's not worth $85. And that is a fact right there. It's not worth $85. Yet... I will pay because I run this show and we got to do it right. But how many people in the chat who gives a shit about the belt? The fights are fire. There are fight. There are firefights on fight night. Why is this not a fight night? This feels like a fight night to me, guys. There's no title on the line. Therefore, there should be not an $85 charge for this fight. This is the point. Let me make this fucking clear as day. This is not worth $85. This is a fight night, friends. And if you're going to pay, we get commission off pay-per-view sales. If anyone should be shilling, it should be me. If anyone should be shilling for this, it should be me. How many people in the chat? Drop a yes. If you're going to buy the pay-per-view, drop a yes. How many people? Uh, they would be better at putting 50000 extra on the line. Yeah, it's silly. All right, Cheeto, Cheetos, you're going to buy it? Mike Jones, you're going to buy it? That's, th- that's two. John Funker, you're going to buy it? That's three. Okay, three people. We don't have a stupid audience. And listen, if, you, if, if it's what you like, if you like WWE, it's fine. I have no problem with that. You're going to buy it? You better use our link. <laughs> you better you better use our link, you son of a... Those, those three or four people that said yes, you better use our link. In the description down below, you better use the link. All right. Well, listen. All right, so good four people. 120 watching, four people will buy it. All right. I'm not here to tell you what to do and what you can't do with your money, but I got to say this. We buy every event over here. We don't... We don't stream any events unless it's maybe boxing I don't but UFC we buy every single event it's just what we do because we can't 
we can't do a live stream and give a fight reaction with shit buffering and all that stuff. We just can't do that. So we got we to gotta do it this way. I got to be honest with you. If I wasn't, I would 100% say got link. Hop into Discord somewhere and say, okay. Not, And I'm not saying that I don't hate these fights on the card. I think you're missing the point. My point is $85 for this card is complete lunacy. It's nuts. It's fucking nuts. Jess, how you doing? Wonderful, wonderful. Moms. Nice. Wonderful, wonderful. I don't know if you heard any of Kennedy's interview, but what a guy. Um, I, I heard the tail end of it, and I heard a little bit in the middle, but I was having a little struggle with Ellie tonight, so oh, okay. I wasn't able to listen to a lot of it. I'll have to go back and listen. We asked the hard-hitting questions, mm -hmm. and Kenny, he, Kennedy handled it like a G. It was 4 a.m., by the way, so he did forget, right? So <gasps> I knew it. It's yeah, just too early. Yeah. Like, imagine waking up at 4 a.m. for an interview. And he took the call. Yeah. What a guy. I wouldn't have taken the call. I'd have been like, ah, oh, fuck it. I know, right? He didn't have to take the call. He did. Yeah. Such a fucking good dude. 4 a.m. 4 a.m. in Kennedy. And uh, let me just say, right, in Zachuku, took the call. And then I asked him how big his dick was, mm -hmm. if he was a virgin. Mm -hmm. At 4 in the morning, he had to answer those did questions. Did he have a good sense of humor about it? Great guy. Like, good. really, like, super cool dude, man. Super cool. Good to hear. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to listen to it. I'm actually like really interested ever since like writing the articles and stuff. Such I nice become guy. more interested in like, you know, you know, the his, and his, 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 he only had one Ami fight, mm -hmm. one Ami fight, then went pro. Then a couple of pro fights. He was destined for greatness. In the contender. It's just nuts. It's crazy. He's never coming back. We'll see. We'll see, man. It's possible. We've had guys never come back, but I think he will because he's a good man. He's a good man. And he could take a joke. Anyway, do you think this pay-per-view... Now, I think this is the problem. Maybe I can't articulate myself appropriately. But I'm going to say it one more time. I think this is a fun card, yes. I don't think it's worth $85 because of a stupid-ass BMF belt that means nothing. If Dustin Poirier wins the fight, will he get a title shot? This is for BMF? Yeah, BMF. It's a BMF belt on the line. Vacated. Poirier oh versus Gaethje too. Um, listen. If I understand like your argument about, I heard it, I most of it um, from in the other room. I understand the argument about how the belt means nothing. It means nothing, and how it doesn't really like have a leg to stand on, and people don't really defend it, and all that stuff. I I totally get it, but you have to look at. Let's just look at the name value alone on the card, right? Mm -hmm. You wouldn't pay for the name value alone. All right. If Dustin Poirier wins this fight, does he get a title shot? No, um, I don't know. No. If <laughs> Justin Gaethje wins this fight, does he get a title shot? Probably not. No, he doesn't. This is the most hilarious part about this. Okay, but you're not even. They don't even saying. get a title shot if they win. It's not guaranteed. It's not guaranteed. It's literally for nothing. You're paying. You're paying nine eighty-five dollars for absolutely nothing. You for a fight night. Guys, a fight night, a fun fight night, a good card. But dude, co-main event, Dustin Poirier, Justin Gaethje, five-round fight. Let's go. But what I was saying is is the na name value is what is the draw. It's a fight night. I don't think so. It's a fucking fight night, man. I think so. So you you would say it's worth paying $85? For these names, every single fight on this card here has okay, Blahovich versus some sort Perez. of draw. Okay. That, that's moving up. It's interesting. Don't get me wrong. It's interesting. Paolo Costa versus Ikram Aleskarov. I like it. Okay. When I say Ikram Aleskarov, do you say... Who the fuck is that guy? But it's the, <laughs> I said each fight has yeah. eight, has some draw, which means like there's even if it's just one name, right? Mm -hmm. So Paolo Costa, people are going to tune in to see. You know? Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I'm just saying I get it. Like, I, I get why people would pay money for it. Okay. Yeah, because people are fooled by the UFC. UFC this is a con artist job. We've seen it before. We saw the same bullshit with uh, Diaz versus Masvidal. It's a fun fight. It's exciting. But they dressed up. They, they literally put a fucking piece of shit in a suit. That's what they did, Jesse. They put they made a little little shit suit out of that that card, and it was a nightmare. <laughs> Masvidal Diaz wound up being a fucking nightmare. Tony Ferguson is a legend and a draw. Michael Chiesa, Kevin Holland. I mean, it, that's a fantastic fight. 
Yeah, it's interesting. Opinion. That's interesting. Uh, for a fight night, yeah, it's great. Steven Thompson and Michelle Pereira. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you why that's exciting. One, we see Thompson, who is arguably, I mean, in my opinion, should have, is a little underrated. Like, I think that people don't give him enough credit. Mm -hmm. Both guys fought Izzy. Both guys are extremely good. Let me just say this. Thompson versus Pereira is an interesting matchup. Guaranteed lock decision. No way. Locked. Someone's getting finished? I, I would think so, yeah. Nope. No one's getting Thompson's finished. Thompson's tactical striking alone. No one's getting finished in that fight. I, I disagree. No one's getting I finished. I think Pereira could easily get knocked out in that fight. Wonderboy Pereira, guaranteed lock goes the distance. Not even a question. Bet the house on that. Uh, Lewis versus uh, Marcos. I already like it because of Lewis. Okay, yeah. He's the Black Beast. How do you not love the Black Beast? That's what I'm okay. saying. Each fight has a draw. Okay. So, I don't know. Maybe you're reading too much into it. Uh, no, I'm just bummed because we're wasting $85 on this. I would honestly have no problem streaming this. No problem at all. Like, honestly, <laughs> if I had to choose groceries or this, I, I mean, would choose groceries. <laughs> I got to be honest with you. I choose food. Like, think about this. $85 is a lot of money, right? Yeah. We got another kid on the way. We're going to waste it on this? I agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> Think about it. But Think that, about that. But you're asking from a very biased standpoint. Not everybody has a kid on the way, Moss. If you not have disposable is income, for money. <laughs> yes. If you have disposable income and you just want to throw it around, that's fine. But I'm a big UFC fan right now, and I have to be honest with you. If I chose a fucking a fill up of gas over this, I would take the gas. I would. Because it's a fight night. There's, I don't know. I don't think it's a fight, terrible card. The only thing that kind of stands out is is Pereira versus Blahovich because the neck the winner could possibly get a title shot, but that's not going to happen either. It's not because that division's all fucked up too. Like we don't even know what's going on over there, right? Like what the hell's going on? Hold on, let me look at. Give me a second here. Aggravating me with this nonsense. <laughs> I think you're aggravating yourself. It just I hate. I hate. If you can't tell, I can't stand the BMF belt. It is the biggest slap in the face to UFC fans. It's literally WWE shit. It's nonsense. It means nothing. Okay, but stop focusing on the belts. So, you, so I, I see what's happening here, and I, you do have a good argument against the whole belt thing. But put the belt aside just for a second. Just try. Clear your your imagination. Put the belt completely aside. Pretend it doesn't even exist. Yes. Right? And look at the card for what it is. Yes. You would not pay for that card? No. You know why? Because if Dustin Poirier wins the fight, what's next for Dustin? Okay, but that's up for that's If up Justin for Gaethje that's wins the fight, what's next for Justin? Nothing. This this fight means nothing. But you're looking at one fight. Look at the entire card. It's the main event. Stop looking at just one fight. Look at the entire card for what it is. The the entire main card could mean nothing, really, realistically. You're saying let could me just mean say nothing, but does it mean nothing to you? They could be, yes, it means nothing to me. I got to be honest with you. Let me be. I'm gonna be completely transparent. Right now, this these fights are interesting. Yes, but none of these fights mean anything to me. They don't mean anything to me. There's nothing that I could say. Oh my god, I can't wait to see what happens here. But excitement value alone. If it was a fight night, I'd be very excited. Yes. I'd say this is a very good fight night. Maybe if these fights were on a card where you, if you had a, a, I don't know, a title fight on top, and then you have Poirier versus Gaethje in the co event. I think very well matched yeah. up. Interesting. But it means nothing. Nothing means anything here. Hmm. Ferguson versus Green. It just c comes down to who sucks less. Costa versus Ikram. Ikram's pretty good. Hold on a second. Let's go over here. Dun, 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 Actually, I'll go like this. Paolo. This kind of came out of left re uh, left field, man. Uh, how do you spell this guy's name? I'm just trying to get rid of the BMF belt. How do you, say, how do you spell Paolo's name? P A. Yeah. U L. -O. Oh, U. Okay. Whoopsie. Okay, Paolo Costa, <clears throat> Ikram, Askarov. Okay, so Askarov coming in, 14-1-0. Uh, Phil Hawes, you got um, Mario Souza. Now, Ikram Askarov was very interesting after his last fight, okay? Most people don't know about him, but he fought, what, uh, one week ago, mm -hmm. okay? One week ago. 
This man is on the main card with one UFC fight. Okay? Now, he's he's interesting. Don't get me wrong. He's an interest. If you're an MMA fan, you're interested in him. But how the fuck is this on the main card? Like, I understand Paolo Costa being on the main card, but how the fuck is he fighting Ikram? Why is Costa... I understand their, re their record is similar, but Costa's fought for the belt. Costa's been through the UFC a little bit here. Ikram, he's on his first fight. After the Contender Series. He got the submission to the Contender Series. He beat Phil Huss. And now all of a sudden he's fighting Paolo Costa? I don't know, Moss. <laughs> that's that's the third from the top. Makes no sense. I just feel like you're reading so much into it. It doesn't. I'm trying to find how this makes any sense. But why do you need it to make sense? It's a BMF because, card. Because they've taken my $85. That's what I'm saying. Because they've taken $85 away from me then and the from their audience. the answer is simple. If, it, if you can't make sense of it, don't spend it. Okay. All right. So you're saying, what are you saying? Look for the streams? I'm not suggesting that, okay. but I'm saying if you are having such a hard time, you know, wrapping your head around it. Four people in the chat will be buying this pay-per-view. Four. Four people. Ah, oh, super chat. Hammerback. Put this in the PPV <laughs> fight fund moss. Let's go. I got to pay for this shit. I got to pay for this shit. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I will buy this pay-per-view for those who are not buying it. And I will tell you exactly what's going on. I'm going to spoil every fight for you guys. I'm going to buy it and spoil it. I'm going to buy it and spoil I'm going to spoil the damn card to everybody. Thank you, my man. Appreciate that donation. That's very kind of you. Whoa! Sure, coming in with a $20 donation. That's going to the shitty pay-per-view. Yes! Yes! Let's go. Let's go, chair. <laughs> Thank you. Just drops 20 bucks in there. Let's go. Sure. With a $20 donation, thank you, softening the blow. I will put that to this damn pay-per-view that they're conning us with. And I will deliver the play-by-play -play to the people that cannot afford this BMF nightmare. Slap in the face, belt to the fans. Does the, does the champ, the BMF champ, do they defend the belt? What do you think? Or does it go into obscurity again? <laughs> I'm what sure happens. it'll circle back around at some point. I, I hope the media is vicious in the lead up to this. I hope the media says, okay, Dana, what's going to happen here? If so-and-so wins the BMF belt, what happens then? Are they going to keep? They may as well keep fighting. What? All right. How about this? Make this more interesting. If you're going to have a BMF belt and hear me out, chat, let me know what you think. Why not have a BMF division? Where you could be ranked, or you could be in a, in so you a know, certain division, like how, weight class. How much more work, though, it would be on the UFC to just build an entirely new division? They slap like, it together. No, it's silly. They slap it together. Like it's, they did 145 Dana women. Dana even knows it's silly. It's too silly to be doing something like that. What do you think? I think, listen, at least make it worth something. So the rejects that can't really do anything in ranks, rankings, throw them over to the BMF that are fun fighters. But then everybody knows them as the rejects. It doesn't matter. They're winning fake belts. It's great. At least it means something. And then what are they? Where, where are they going to get the drive when they get sent over to the reject division? You Picture know, like this. Picture this. And maybe the UFC is going to go in this direction. You have the reject BMF division, okay? There's eventually going to be a guy in that BMF division that pulls it together and actually wins an actual belt, too. On one shoulder, the BMF belt. On the other shoulder, the real belt. It gets interesting. Oh, Ma, stop it. It gets a little interesting. But you can't tell me. You could charge me $85 for a pay-per-view for a belt that means absolutely nothing. Makes no sense. Make it make sense to me, guys. Oh, the BMF. The B Who would want the BMF belt? Look what it did to Jorge Masvidal. It destroyed him. That's the worst thing that ever happened to Masvidal. So make the weight class. I don't know. Who knows? Wonderful, wonderful. There's 20 off the 85. 
Hook the belt and joy the card. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I'm going to put that towards the paper. Thank you. Thank you so much. I would never... I would never leave you guys hanging if you can't afford the pay-per-view. I would make damn sure that we would be here. We'd buy the pay-per-view and tell you exactly what's going down. Thank you. Ah, uh, super chat. Casey Jones. Hakuna, tomato, potato, mutter, hibiscus. Hakuna, tomato, potato, mutter, hibiscus. Mm -hmm. Hakuna, tomato, potato, yes. mutter, hibiscus. I, hibiscus. Yeah. I, hibiscus. Ah, uh, super chat. Hakuna, tomato, potato, matata, hibiscus. Hakuna, tomato, potato, matata, hibiscus. Hakuna, tomato, potato, matata, hibiscus, 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 hibiscus. Thank you. Thank you, Casey. And thank you, Dark Matter, man. Hey, man, I really appreciate that. The currency change and everything like that. Thank you so much. That was very kind of you. Uh, thank you to everyone that dropped a donation. I appreciate it. So at the end of the day, I'm going to wrap this conversation up in a typo and um, we'll move on. But uh, listen, I'm not saying this is a terrible card or terrible fights. I just don't like what they're throwing in front of me for $85. I, I'm, I, I just can't justify the pay for that. Okay. Um, and I got to be honest with you, I think Poirier Gaethje 2 is not going to be as exciting as the first one with the new version of Justin Gaethje. I, do, I don't. I think Gaethje's going to kind of pump the brakes. He's going to be more tactical. It's going to be more of a chess match than a car crash. And what do you think about that, Jess? I'm sorry. The baby was just kicking the crap out of me. Uh, what was the... What well, Gaethje, was... like this fight, do you think it's, it's going to be as nutty as the first time around from what we've seen of Gaethje lately? I I mean, I, I always... You know me. I'm always thinking a Gaethje fight's going to be fun and exciting. I don't think he ever lets you down, you know? Now, I will say I noticed the last few fights, he has seemed um, to go in with a little more hesitancy covering his head. You know how I used to say he goes in headstrong, he doesn't protect himself, he just kind of like takes whatever and then gives... But I think this time maybe he'll be a little more cautious, so it could lead to a more boring fight. It will be boring. I think so. I do. But I we'll think it's not see. like completely boring. Not like the worst fight we've yeah, ever seen. Yeah, maybe he'll be a little more careful. But it's not going to be like that first one. That's for sure. Especially how he, he fought Fiziev. Yeah. Gaethje is he's a very different fighter this time around, man. He really is. So that's going to be interesting. Can Gaethje, can What are the chances? I know you're a Gaethje g gal. Mm -hmm. But what are the chances of Justin going in there and getting redemption? And I do they run it back? I always think he has a great chance. I always do. But and that's not even biased. I just think that he's a very skilled fighter and I think that like in the fights that he's lost, I just feel like maybe he wasn't honed well enough. But I do think he has a very good chance of going in and and taking it back from Poirier. Wow. So what do you do? You run it back again? If Gaethje wins, is it like, is there another well, fight? Yeah, yeah, I would then say. Then they defend the BNF belt? I know belt? it's like, stupid, what the fuck? but like. It's so dumb. If Gaethje wins, then you kind of have no choice, really. You yeah, know? if Gaethje wins his fight, they're probably going to run it back. Yeah. And then, and then what, Gaethje's going to have the BMF belt if and Dustin's going to try to win it. Like, what? <laughs> yeah, but if Poirier wins, then enough is enough. We move on from this whole BMF yeah. thing. Explain this. How this works, chat. Explain this to me. If Gaethje wins his fight. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a dumb conversation. It's so dumb. It's such a dumb conversation. I hate it. it. I hate my life right now <laughs> for having this stupid ass conversation. But I'm going to do it. If Justin Gaethje wins this fight, does he defend the BMF belt against Poirier for their third fight? Answer me this. Yes, sir. Yes? yes. All right, chat. Help me out. Help me figure this out. Does Do we have another pay-per-view? Headlined by the BMF Justin Gaethje defending his BMF <laughs> God damn it, man. What is this? Okay, I see a couple of yeses. Absolutely, yes. Okay. All right. All right, I'm done with this conversation. I can't. I Thank can't. Thank God. Yeah, I'm out. I'm out. I'm ready to move on. I'm like dreading fight week for this. I'm dreading it. I'm, I'm so dreading it. Are they going to have the white gloves again? Where they put the BMF the white gloves. Yeah, they put the BMF belt on the table. Oh and, yeah, yeah. And they yeah, had like, fucking white uh, gloves. <laughs> I don't think they do that anymore. They had fucking white gloves. And media surrounding them is like, here it is. Here's the BMF belt. Yeah, I think they were Fuck just, off. No, I think they were just trying to sell it as something bigger than it was, you know? I hate it. I hate it. I hate you. All right. Uh okay, so that's two ninety one. Two ninety. 290. 
Okay. I want to know what you think about this. Let's get into like some real business here. So UFC 290 is Volkanovski versus Rodriguez. That's UFC 290. They're headlining it. That's going to be International Fight Week. So Las Vegas, baby. Viva Las Vegas. They're going to merge. You got champ versus champ status going on here. Interim versus the actual champ. Volkanovski going down. And International Fight Week. So good for Volkanovski and Yair. That they, they get like, this is like, this is it, right? Like International Fight Week is a big deal for the UFC. So on uh, the 8th, these guys are going to be jumping in there. And uh, summertime in full effect. You got Brandon Moreno and Pintoja in the co-main event. So another championship fight. Pintoja getting a big opportunity. The GOAT Bo Nickel <laughs> versus our friend Treshawn Gore on this card. And uh, here we go again. But, I mean, listen. The UFC does this, right? They they see a young talent. They know this, this person could be a big superstar. They just throw him on the main card. Robert Whitaker versus Duplessis. I don't know. Did you see? I I asked Kennedy about Duplessis. I don't know if you saw that. Um, no, I heard yeah. you ask about um De uh, Devin Clark or say something about Devin Clark. Yeah, I asked him about the real African champion, <laughs> Duplessis. Yeah, but Kennedy handled it beautifully. So, um, if you want to see his answer, run the stream back. Uh, Dan Hooker versus Jalen Turner is a fire fight, man. That's such a good fight over there. But you have two title fights and interesting stuff here. Whitaker, I love Bobby Knuckles. So, him being on the main event. Hooker versus Turner is a good matchup. And I got to listen, Nick, Bo Nickel is supposed to be the truth, right? He has been annihilating people in his limited fights, but he's a very good wrestler. He's an American wrestler. So, people are super hyped about Bo. And Trayshawn Gore is our boy. So, you know, I want to see Treshawn go in there and do work. So that's interesting on a main card for us being selfish. I like this. This feels like a pay-per-view. This, this, I don't know. What do you think? Do you like the other card or this card? 291 or 290? Um, I like them both for different reasons. I think there's more name value on the other card. But this one's a really great card. I like it. You know, I, I can't, I can't think of any fight that I see here that, that's not intriguing to me. Yeah, especially the Whitaker versus Duplessis fight. I want to see what Duplessis can do, man. He talked a big game. Now he's fighting Bobby Knuckles. Good luck. Good luck right there. That's not that's there's no layup there. If Duplessis wins, automatic like beeline for the title. Yeah. And Izzy versus Duplessis, please. If Whitaker wins, what do we do? Like Bobby Knuckles goes at it again? He's got to stop. Like he's like he's the guy just foil he's just foiling the UFC's plans over and over again. You know, I mean, you got you're gonna have to give Bobby Knuckles another another oh, shot at it. it. He's getting closer and closer, Jess. You know, and I gotta be honest with you, both guys in different ways. I would like to see fight Izzy. I would like to see Bobby do it again and see what he can do. Um, Dan Hooker versus Turner is just a good, solid fight. Turner's like been on a little bit of a roll, and Hooker's bounced back. So I like this card. I think that this feels pay per view to me. Chat, what do you think about this card? International Fight Week. There's some more fights on here. Robbie Lawler versus Nico Price. Come on. Sean Brady versus Jack Della Maddalena. Oh, my God. I'm about to jizz my pants. And then you got, you know, you got to fight fights over here where you're like, all right. But Simon, uh, look at this one. The kid that fought um, Raul Rosas Jr. and beat him, uh -huh. he's fighting the next young talent. 22 years of age, Cameron Simon. Simon. This this kid Rodriguez is getting all the young talent coming his way. So I uh, do the prelims are. This is just this is a banger card, top to bottom. Love it. Fun card here, International Fight Week. Anyone in Vegas? Anyone get to go to this thing? Good stuff, man. And, and a big opportunity for Volkanovski, you know, to really make a statement here after that uh, last fight against uh, Islam. Robbie Slaughter, chat. What do you think? You like this fight? You like this card? Great card, but hey, who are we to uh, really know what the fuck is gonna happen? Says Hoot. That's why. That's why you gotta watch. Yeah, it's a really solid card, man. That feels pay per view. Now, who knows? I mean, maybe the the prelims in the Utah card. Let me see. Let's let's see. UFC two ninety one. Let's see what the prelims look like. Who knows if the prelims are? But then again, you don't have to pay for the prelims, so it doesn't really matter. Two ninety one. Let's see. Let's see what else they got over here. 
The cool part about this card, though, I got to say, is I uh, well, we'll have the new baby along here, so that doesn't work. But we could go visit our cousin. When is this card? This is in July. Oh yeah, that's not happening. But it's July 29th, Jess. Can we go? Can we no. go to our cousins? I don't He's know. Newborn. He's gonna be like three weeks old. Will no. you stay home with the baby? I'll go to the fights. You do Jesus. the reaction. I'll go to the fights because it's such a good card. It's all hands on deck. Okay. All right. So let's see what we got. C.J. Vergara versus Salvador. Um, they have Ferguson Green in the prelims. Oh, uh-huh. wait a second here. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so, okay, that makes sense. Ferguson, Bobby Green. Oh, yeah, because that was too many fights. There's only five. So, Lewis, Rod- uh, DeLima, Thompson, Pereira, Costa, Leskarov, Blahovich versus Pereira. I mean, uh, excuse me. Costa versus a- Leskarov, Pereira versus Blahovich, and then Gaethje. Okay. All right. Well, still got to add some fights onto there on the prelims. Who knows? Maybe Maybe we'll get some. I feel like there's got to be something else juicy. One more. Give me another juicy one to throw into the mix here. I don't know. Give me another juicy one. You give me another juicy one. What the fuck is Leon Edwards doing? <laughs> when the hell is he going to fight? Why isn't Colby Leon on this card? Didn't they say... Hold on. Let me How look. is this not headlined by Colby hold, versus hold on. Leon? I heard something about Leon the other day. I mean, I guess they were supposed to fight in London. Hold on one sec. Yeah, why isn't it Colby Leon co main by Poirier and Gaethje? You got Poirier and, and Colby storyline... The media, I mean, that's the way. Or Colby, do, do Leon Bala, I don't fucking care. Just give me something. Give me, give me something. He wants London? Yeah. Give him, strip him. Strip Leon. <laughs> strip. Make an interim strap. You're going to make, you're going to make a fucking fake belt. Make this for the, the October va- he wants. Uh, October re- return and laughs off Colby Covington's claim. I don't understand. Claim. Hold on a second here. Let me go to UFC. This is this is this is doesn't make yo Aljamain Sterling is he like. He said July is one hundred percent too soon. Let me ask you a question: Is Aljamain Sterling a G or a bitch? Let me ask you, Jess. Is he a G? Because I got to be honest with you. Taking the fight against Sean O'Malley could be uh, saying, "Hey man, that's a G move. Going to Boston, I short like turnaround." Him. No, is it G or or is it like is he just the UFC's bitch? Because how does a champion not get to call the shots? No, I don't here? think he's the UFC's bitch. He's not. He's he has no say in anything. But I I think he's foiling a lot of plans for the UFC. He's not. He's just listening. No, I think I think the UFC wants doesn't want him here much longer. No, they don't. As, as the champ, UFC is treating Aljamain Sterling like a bitch. <laughs> they are. He's literally well, their no, lapdog. I think they're just throwing fights in his direction in an attempt to, to dethrone him. Aljo. Because they need get back a better on the show. champ. He's not a marketable champion. I've said it a million times. They're literally trying to chase him out. I completely agree with you. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, But that doesn't make him a, uh, the UFC's bitch. Leon if he Edwards. were the UFC's bitch, then the, then the UFC would just kind of be like using him. But the UFC is using everyone else to get rid of him. So Al- if anything, the rest of the bantamweight division is the UFC's bitch right now. No, Aljo is their bitch. No. He is. Because then they would be using Aljo. They like, are. Does that make sense? They're, to- util- they're using Aljo. Yes. No, they want him out. They don't want him to be champ. Okay, you're missing the whole point. How are they using Yes, they him? want him out. I agree with you. The reason why he's their bitch is because he just defended the belt against Henry Cejudo, yeah. who the UFC says, you have to fight this guy. Okay. Now the UFC says they bring in uh, Sean O'Malley after the fight yeah. and say, okay, now you got to fight this guy on a short, short turnaround in Boston, which you you know the crowd is going to be going crazy for O'Malley over there, yeah. right? Where is the champ getting any say in this? Where is the champ saying, well, let me, let me talk to my team here and get back to the drawing board? Instead, here's the funny part. This turnaround that Aljo is doing is tied for the quickest turnaround a champ has ever done. Volkanovski was the other one. Mm-hmm. Okay? So Aljamain Sterling just says, okay, I guess I'm going to do this. Now, he should beat O'Malley. I mean, Sterling called out O'Malley inside the octagon He wanted O'Malley fight. before Cejudo. He wanted O'Malley. Okay, but it's not like it's not like you, the UFC was just like, oh, you won? Okay, now you're going to fight. It, it, That's it what wasn't, they did. It wasn't really like that because uh, Sterling wanted this. Like, he wanted... He wanted O'Malley... On his terms. He's not getting it on his terms anymore. His terms? He's Now he's getting O'Malley after a quick turnaround, a five-round fight, fight with Henry. Is he complaining? And and now, well, he's just like, whatever. Ray Longo just talked to the media. He's like, I didn't even hear about this. Okay, but is Aljo complaining? Look, look watch this. 
I, I'm sure Ray Longo said something, but I'm saying, is did Aljo complain? He's just like, I guess. Oh, Longo. Okay, so what's the problem? No, oh God, you're mis- everything is all, my, all the. It's just, I think you're missing everything that I'm saying here. Because we're agreeing on the fact that the UFC is trying to bury Aljo. We agree on that. There's no disagreement there. The point I'm trying to make is the UFC is doing everything that they can to turn Aljo around quickly. Leon Edwards, the UFC is not forcing him to do anything. Israel Adesanya, they're not forcing him to do anything. I know. I'm just trying to they're figure out chill. how that makes him the UFC's bitch. That's all. Because Al Jermaine Sterling just fought, and now they're turning him around. He's got to jump right back into a camp without relaxing and, and doing his championship tour, which he should have the right to. He's jumping right into a camp to fight Sean O'Malley on this short kind of notice in Boston, on in hostile territory. Not one person in Boston will be rooting for Aljamain Sterling. And, and the logic is like, well, it's on the east side of things over there, so people are going to definitely root for that's No, they're not going to do that. They're going to root for Sean O'Malley. So everything is against Aljamain Sterling. They, they, he doesn't have a chance. Now, Aljo should win. It matchup wise, so what the UFC says, okay, Aljo's probably gonna win this fight. Let's put everything against him, turn him around quick. You know what I'm saying? And then fight in hostile territory. Mm-hmm. UFC's like shitting on Sterling. You know? But Sterling could be seen as a G for saying, you know what? I'm a company man. I'll take the fight. Here's Ray Longo. Has no knowledge of Aljamain Sterling agreeing to Sean O'Malley at UFC 292. May 17th. Well, I mean... They're not happy with this. Who's Aljo's manager? Uh, He was with Vander... Gary Vanderchuk for a little bit. I don't know if he's still with him. But Gary V was... He was actually under that management for a little bit. So I I think he's still with him. Because why should Ray Longo have any knowledge? I know he's his coach and everything. But like... It's not like his coach has to know everything that's going on, you know, right away. It's just... I don't know, man. I feel like this was the opportunity for Aljo Maynard Sterling to say... Pump the brakes. What are they going to do? Do an interim belt? If Aljo says no, what are they going to do? Aljo's the champ. He should be like, yeah, I want O'Malley on my terms. Let's do it MSG well, Aljo's in November. always been a little bit of a pushover, though. So I, I don't think that he's really, like, one to stand up to the UFC like a Conor McGregor would. You know? Boston, Massachusetts. Okay. Um, this is when? When's the date of this? 8-19. Okay. Why is Al Jermaine Sterling not at Madison Square Garden, his home, a month later, defending the belt? Who's at Madison Square Garden? That we don't know yet. Two nights. Well, it's, it's, it's probably two ninety three, right? Than Aljo. Well, he could still be on that you have card. To remember, Al Jermaine Sterling, or not Al Jermaine, um, uh, Madison Square Garden is like the mecca for. Oh, I know why. For the big fighter, he you can't know fight I- there. He can't fight there. He, uh, the license. There's something health-wise. He's denied. The commission? Yeah, I think he can't fight there. I think that's what it is. What? Fuck. I think that's it. Well, regardless, MSG is not yeah. a wasted um, space for the UFC. They always use MSG as like the big the big night, the big fights. And Aljo is not a big guy. Yeah, he like, can't he's... fight New York. You don't. You, I mean, why can't they fucking figure that out? Why I'm can't sure they, they figure sure that out? If I was Aljamain Sterling, I would say, hey, figure out MSG. Let's figure this shit out. And if not, no, nah, we'll go. We'll go to felon. I don't know what the reason is. That is true. There's something about MSG. Why can't Aljamain Sterling? Let's find out. Why uh, can't? I don't know what the reason is. It's like a health thing. Aljo fight in New York. It says 2019 wasn't approved in New York State Athletic Fighting Commission. Okay, it's 2019. Not clear to fight in New York. Here's May 2023. He's not medically cleared to fight in New York. Uh, if there's one fighter who could uh, who would appear to be a, a sure fix fixture in the UFC in New York, it's Aljamain Sterling, born Uniondale on Long Island, the uh, reigning bantamweight champion, built the foundation uh, of his career in his hometown, blah, 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 blah. blah. Uh, let's see. He still considers his home gym. Uh, shockingly absent in his uh, UFC locations. A recent conversation, Ariel Hawani's MMA hour. He revealed a serious health condition as the main reason why. So when I made my UFC debut February 22, 2014, I'm a vet. 
Uh, UFC 170, the Ronda Rousey versus Sarah McMahon card. I believe I had to get a CAT scan. For the first time ever, I got CAT scan. They found uh, two spots in my brain. It was like a, a millimeter of something like that. So they found something, but it looked like uh, there was no tra there was trauma. They weren't sure if it was for exact term, so uh, aneurysm or angioma. What is an angioma? Is that like a blood clot? I don't know, something like that. So in order for me to be cleared, I would have to like or is that go like a to mass? what? I think it actually it's it's uh, like a mass. Hold on. I don't know. Go take it out of my head. So I wasn't sure if I, what the fuck? So he's got something in his head. I mean, if this is the case, if this is the fucking it's case. It's like a tumor. It's a, it's a benign growth that consists of small blood vessels. So he shouldn't be cleared to f fight anywhere. How is he cleared to fight anywhere else? Well, like, this doesn't make any sense. If it's in your brain, I mean, that's pretty serious. Yeah, so why is he cleared to fight anywhere? Like, that doesn't make any sense. Well, all state commissions are different. I understand that. And they have different policies, so as long, I guess as dude, long as he's showing... It's fucking weird. You know, if, it's, if it's not serious, if it's medically not serious... <laughs> Monkeypox. If it's, if, it's, if it's medically not serious, I don't understand why he's not cleared. That's, really, that's a really weird situation, huh? Aljo is just cursed, man. This dude is cursed. Yet, I gotta say this. All the heat that this man has taken from everybody... You know, even myself, I, I've given Aljo heat, you but know? not like undeservedly so, Moss. Yeah, I think I get it. I, I yeah, have I reasons like why. He's like a full-on victim, and he's but, not. He asked for a lot of but what think he about got. This. He's overcome it all, and that's pretty fucking impressive. He's overcome it all, and he's still very much disliked as a who champion, cares? Moss. That, <laughs> but who cares? He gets the it's last laugh. Good. <laughs> it, he goes into Boston, smashes O'Malley. You would think it's that nuts. overcoming it all, he would gain the respect of fans. And the fact he that he shit? hasn't, Moss, is not a good look for the UFC, and they know that. Okay, but the point is this. He overcame everything, and he still he still gets the final laugh. What was it that he you overcame, know? Moss? Getting kneed in the head, playing possum. Oh, God, I feel like you're going to disagree with <laughs> and the, Well, the whole Aljo thing I disagree with because it's just it's so silly. All right, well, anyway, he uh, to me, he gets the final laugh because he gets to do whatever the f I mean, I mean, he gets the belt. You know what I'm saying? The only thing is he doesn't, for some reason, I would I would use every possible way of being a champion because, like, the minute that belt is away from his waist, the UFC will literally just shove him under the rug. Well, I don't, I don't know. They will shove him. They would just fucking scoot him under that rug again and make sure he never gets another shot at that title unless he f gets a million wins again, you know? So if Aljamain has the title, he should do everything in his power to fight on his terms. And I think this Boston fight's not on his terms. He should win, but if he doesn't, that's a wrap, man. It's a wrap. Aljo, Aljo is going to be pushed aside. Anyway, chat, what do you think, man? Aljamain Sterling, he's fighting on this card, 292. Uh, so far, you just got Zhang versus Lemos, which is fun, man. Uh, Weili Zhang is always fun, and Amanda Lemos has deserved this opportunity. It's not like she hasn't. Uh, let's see. So she got the Rodriguez win, uh, the Karate Hottie win. Man, I tell you what, those wins don't really hold up. Lost to Jessica Andrade, beat Angela Hill. Damn, man. They don't. You know what? Maybe I take it back. How weak is one fifteen? <laughs> How weak are the straw weights? Anyway, all right. Good luck. Uh, Cody Garbrandt versus Batista. The goat Cody Garbrandt back in play, coming off the win. All right, Chad, what do you got? Aljo uses uh, Donier to keep grounded opponent status. Did you see Sherman Kim and Jessica Clark getting cut from the UFC? I did. I am shocked that What's-Her-Face didn't get cut. Like, Kim got cut. Why didn't the opponent get cut for that nonsense she pulled? And Chase Sherman as well. Yeah, I did see that. Yeah, it's a bummer people losing their jobs, but I understand. Aljo wants to move up. That's true, yeah. Yeah, if he loses, like, how does that work? Does he still move up? Like, what happens? Marab scaring Aljo into taking his fight. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, I guess Aljo's window is slowly closing. Like, he's getting older, and I guess whatever opportunity comes his way, he's just going to take it. But, yeah, he's fighting. He's fighting August... Against Sugar Sean O'Malley. That's going down. Does anyone think O'Malley's going to win that? Do you, Jess, who's going to win this? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, oh, shit. Why are you thinking about it? Well, because I'm thinking about, like, the antics that Aljo has been trying to pull in the octagon lately. So I'm just trying to consider, is he going to be pulling any antics in this fight? And the answer is probably going to be a yes. And if so, then that kind of, I don't know. I feel like it gives Spider certain leverage. So I, I, Yeah, I, I agree with Zoman. I think, I think Sean, like, I he, remember this. I picked O'Malley over Peter Yan. I picked Sean O'Malley over Peter Yan, one of the greatest picks of all time. I am not picking Sean O'Malley here. Not no way. And I'm sure he's going to be a pretty sizable underdog. I understand he's got power. He's an Arizona guy, so it'd be cool if he won. Nothing nothing not to shit on Sean. I just think this matchup is a complete nightmare for Sean. And that's why the UFC is trying to do what they can to give him any sort of advantage. I think 0.0 shot he wins this fight. O'Malley did beat Jan. Even Aljamain Sterling said so. So, ha! I mean, Aljo is already set for life. Aljo better TKO him because uh, leave to the judges. I wouldn't. That's true. You don't want to leave it to the judges with a fight like that. Aljo's going to smother him, though. He's going he's gonna to drag him around. He does have ground game. His jujitsu is actually not that bad, but I think Aljamain's MMA grappling is, is a massive problem for Sean. O'Malley getting the push. Aljo is far more athletic. O'Malley has a chance to hit a surprise KO. About 99% chance Aljo will backpack him for five rounds. Listen, O'Malley, remember what Aljo did to Corey Sanhagen? That long neck of Sean. Just look at that long neck. Sean better have that knee ready. Look at that long neck. Aljo is just going to wrap around him. I mean, even if he tucked in his chin, Aljo could choke him out. Sean even admitted back in the day, his, his problem, like if people would just start grappling him back in the day because he would have problems with it. I do like the fact that Sean is very transparent. Like if he sucks at something, he'll say it. Um, he's pretty much of an, an open book in his interviews or his podcast. So that's one thing I got to say about O'Malley I like. Actually, Sean O'Malley doesn't seem like a bad dude at all. He doesn't. He doesn't seem like a bad dude. It could be annoying tendencies in certain ways, but he doesn't seem like a bad dude. I thought uh, and uh, Triple C would uh, sniff ball sack <laughs> all 25 minutes. Aljo would wipe the floor with O'Malley on the ground. Yes. If O'Malley wins the biggest upset of all time, we'll see what the odds are like. I would be... Yeah, I'd be very shocked. I would be... Dude, if, if O'Malley wins this fight... Could you imagine that Boston crowd? I'm not under uh, I'm not underestimating his striking. We all know O'Malley's a very good striker. We all know Ma O'Malley's a quitter too. That's a problem. That's a problem. He's a quitter. So is Aljo, I guess you could say. <laughs> I guess I guess you could say that as well. But at least Aljo won a belt and he redeemed himself somehow. O'Malley's a sleeper. Triple C could have won if he fought smarter. Yeah, I'm sure Triple C is kicking himself in the ass for certain mistakes. O'Malley looks like Gollum. Rob took his jacket. <laughs> Figueroa fight was announced uh, too. How did that turn out? Is he? Who's Figgy fighting? I don't even know who's Figgy fighting. Okay, so listen. I got to say this. I've complained about a bunch, but at the end of the day... We still have interesting fights to end the year, we, and there's still more to be announced. So it's still going to get interesting. We still got some really good stories. Um, I'm curious to see how everything plays out. My pick of Marab being the 135 champ by the end of the year, looking very slim now. Unless Aljo, I mean, I guess this August fight, who knows? Maybe I get lucky. Maybe I'll get really lucky, but then again, Marab got hurt. He got that hand injury, so he's done. Yeah. That's out. That Michael Jackson thriller jacket, Marab, hilarious, yeah. I was this close to get my Marab championship. This close. Aljo had to f fuck it up! All right, anyway, uh, is there anything else, chat, you'd like to talk about? If we missed anything, let me know. But I've pretty much exhausted my brain. Two hours, 18 minutes. I think I've had enough. But um, shout out to Kennedy. Inzichku coming on the show. 
Uh, very nice talking to Kennedy. Really cool story and sad story, but he and he also fielded our crazy questions. A guy would guarantee he's not going to answer those questions or ask those questions on other shows. You can lock that up. But let me just see something really quick. And then we'll get out of here. The secrets of the universe. All right. So I'm just looking through the news here. Oh, yeah. Mackenzie Dern. So did you guys hear Mackenzie Dern? Her media scrum? I'm starting to feel really good about this Angela Hill pick. I'm starting to feel really good. We're getting closer and closer. My bookie. I might have to make the bet before Hill becomes a favorite. Mackenzie Dern sounding. It sounds like she's questioning herself. Let's see. Uh, 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 uh. Mm -hmm. What's going on? I, I type in Mackenzie Dern and accent is the first thing that pops up. Here, listen to this. Well, kids, I know it wasn't uh, originally expected to be a main event, but it is a main event. Uh, does it feel like a, a big moment? Or a she big, looks pretty muscular, though. Big opportunity. I will say that. Yeah, she's look like, she looks like she's in great shape. Um, She's got a pretty long neck, too. Oh, boy. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. Yeah, we'll listen to this a little bit. Opportunity to be in the headliner again? Yeah, a big opportunity. Um, I'm owing to my main events <laughs> here at the Apex. So um, when they gave me the another opportunity, I was like, okay, let's do it. Um, I wanted like the crowd. I was excited to be in North Carolina, Charlotte, the crowd. Um, so I have like a little bit trauma, I guess you could say here, but I wanted to break that too at the same time. So back here, I've had good moments at Apex too, so I'm not complaining. And it's media, it's, you know, another poster, you know, to have at home. So it's a great opportunity and I'm, oh, it's one week later too, so it's not so bad. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess the fact that you're 0-2 in main events, I mean, is there any link there at all? I mean, look, you're, you're fighting at the highest level. You're going to have setbacks or whatever, but they both have 0-2 in main events. Happen to me. Is it just coincidence, or is there anything you take out of those that you think, I wasn't approaching that right? Um, I mean, I don't think as, like, a strategy-wise, but I think the type of fighters that I was given for my main events, Marina and Yun Chaonan, I think they were both um, really experienced um, – fighters uh, with good movement, you know, and for me now going into this fight and with my loss, um, I have a vision that's better as in like, okay, I don't need to submit every single round, like this pressure and just this anxiety, you know, not anxiety, but like excitement, you know, I need to submit, I need to submit, you know, if I didn't finish the first round, then the second round, if I didn't finish it, and then you could kind of see the emotion and the frustration getting in, and I'm like, okay, these girls, they know how to win by like points, you know, and they know how to use the rule book, which is part of the game, you know, not that it's bad, but, um, you know, the judges, I feel like with the Unshine, and I feel like I could have won that fight, you know, like I feel I did so much on the ground, but it wasn't enough to get like a 10-8. And now I understand like, hey, if I'm on the cage, you know, the cage is like the ground, but up, you know? So <laughs> instead of getting to the cage and take it down, like ground and, like not ground and pound, but elbows, knees, make them, you know, win the round, you know, don't force myself to, you know, fall on bottom or something. So a little bit like tactical things that I think this fight, it's really gonna show. And, um, but not necessarily because of five rounds or three rounds. I think just with the opponents, they brought that out of me. And I think I felt, I was confident. I was more confident about submitting Young Shannon and Marina than I was Your about face. Angela. You know what I mean? I think Angela is a little bit harder to submit. She's scrappy, you know, and things like that. And they, I was so, I was so confident to submit them and I wanted to submit them that it was a little bit like too excited, <laughs> you know, instead of more stretch, patience and, calm and precision you talk about like the tactic change and the mindset change like have you been able to work on that like in sparring like has that been the primary focus or is it like I hope I do it on Saturday yeah no it's, I've been working on that this whole camp it's been so crazy like my divorce has been crazy like everything coach Perilla he was out of town for a month with Luke for his bare knuckle fight you know so so listen to this divorce coach Perillo's out of town She's 0-2 in main events. 
everything is against Mackenzie Dern in this fight. So if you're a better, you got to take these things into consideration. Now, we still got to see the face-off. Um, we got to see how that goes down. But uh, let me look at my bookie here. I'm telling you, Angela Hill is a, is a pretty good underdog. It's pretty solid. Hill's a plus 146. I feel like it's the closer we get. We might I might have to put in the bed soon before they're even money. They're they're a pick 'em. Oh, it's like basically this camp was like tactic in having this vision of fighting that I never had before. And I feel kinda like, man, I'm like ten fights in the UFC and I just found that out now, you know, like to understand that I just need to win the round. And if you do that each round, you win the fight, <laughs> you know, instead of me thinking, like I would finish the round and out of one minute, I'd spend maybe 20 seconds, like, did I win that round? You know, like at this level, the top five, top 10, you can't, you can't finish the round and not know if you won or not. You know, you need to be leaving the round and know like, yeah, I'm winning here, I'm losing here. Okay, what I needed to, to steal the round. Okay, what are the judges seeing, you know? And that's kind of the, tactic that I was able to train on this camp since it was so crazy was more like understanding the MMA game and that we do use the judges and we do like steal things you know you steal all right thank you thank you Mackenzie wow thank you that was very nice of you to stop by and say those things all right, what do you guys think in the chat? A lot of people were... <laughs> I didn't have to do the impersonation there. She did it for herself. Whoa, Jesus Christ, man. All I'm thinking about is like... You know, listen, divorce sucks. It's not fun. It's definitely not a fun thing to go through. But all I'm thinking about is like, I get it. I, I understand why he left or she left. I don't know I don't know who left, but I'm assuming it's him. <laughs> Dude, imagine listening to that. Imagine coming home from work and hearing that. I don't care how nice her ass is. My God. It's like, shut the fuck up. All right, anyway. Thank you, guys. Thank you guys for stopping by. I appreciate it. Uh, we will be reacting to the fight Saturday. Um, and we'll make our predictions on Friday. We'll lock in our predictions. I'm really liking, though, Angela Hill right now. Um, I just have to wait, wait, wait. Until the very last second. If you min missed Kennedy's, uh, Kennedy in Zichuku on the show, run it back. Run it back uh, and watch the interview. Let us know in the comments section what you thought. I think the guy was fucking cool. Really, really cool. He's in Germany. He took the call at 4 a.m. So that is absolutely wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. wonderful. I thank him for that. By the way, my buddy uh, John Dots just wrote us a new song for the show. So, like, we have our songs that we play. But we're going to be debuting our new Fight Buddy song. It's going to kind of be the anthem for the show. So we're going to have like a new song that like when you hear this song, you think MMA holes. So us, the community, is going to have... This is our song, boys and girls. This is our song. I'm very excited. I was playing it today uh, for my daughter and she was clapping along with it like, yeah, she was going for it. So I cannot wait to, to debut that for you guys. It's Yeah, I know. Seven, it only took seven years. I told him, my, my buddy's doing it on the arm. He's like, yeah, I got you. So um, it's cool that's a friend that put it together. And, um, you know, there's no lyrics to it. There's no lyrics to the song. It's just baby, basically like our anthem. When you hear this riff, you know what's up. You know you know it's us. So, um, yeah, we got our own song. It's kind of cool. <laughs> Renew his vows to the, I will. Yeah, that's, that's true. I will do that. All right, guys. I'll see you. What's today? Today's Wednesday. I'll see you Friday. By the way, second channel, not the MMA holes. If we ever pop up and you know hang out, you can subscribe to our second channel, not the MMA holes. It's our little clubhouse over there. We play video games and talk shit. Don't be an a hole. Be an MMA hole. Yeah. This is number one bullshit. Get out! Get out! Get out! A black man can't drink.